bussin' with the boys. Bro. There you go. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, are we rolling? We're on? This is it? Perfect. I love I love the enthusiasm, Mitchie. It is Monday while we're filming this. You're listening to this on Tuesday. You are watching episode 246 of Bustin' with the Boys. We're going to take a little look at what we're going to get into this week. Jackie, go not you flip that over back to the other thank you so much. We're going to hit ourselves a little weekend recap. We're going to hit a little... Uh, we're going to hit a little college football and NFL. We're going to talk about good, bad, ugly. We're going to do twisted question. Shitty. Some fun, some fun twisted questions. Fun twi multiple twisted questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of that poopiest moments. Because we're going to we're gonna hack that algorithm by not saying any bad words right now. And then obviously our direct TV, overly direct tape. There's a whole lot to look forward to in the show. But one thing you have to look forward to every single week. And that is the official vehicle of busting with the boys and that is the zr2 family chevy silverado there's a new family with unstoppable grit and they are the official partners of busting with the boys family it's crazy like i just said that and that is the chevy silverado zr2 the first ever silverado heavy duty zr2 joins the franchise to make chevy zr2 the only truck brand with a full line of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventure takes you with exclusive multi-matic dssv dampers rugged mud terrain tires and up to 14 available Camera views. That's a lot of cameras, brother. You got that cameras, in yours? A lot of oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, it, people know. I, I rock the ZR2. Yeah. Heavy. There's not a dent yeah. in that vehicle. That's and how many cameras are on that thing. You'll be like, oh, yeah. Well, you're sponsored by them. I'm sure they gave it to you. No, I paid full fucking price for that thing. Oh, and it is worth bleep every that out. penny. Bleep that out. Bleep the F out. Yeah, yeah. But definitely. just know that yeah. that bleep you just heard was passion in Will's voice when he's talking about the ZR2, the Chevy Silverado ZR2, Silverado HD ZR2, a family with a uh, commanding and unstoppable Great. Head, head over to Chevy.com and check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official truck of Bussin with the boys. Now, weekend recap. Let's talk about that before we grab uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, dude. Let's, um, interesting weekends for everybody involved. Obviously, the boys went up to Knoxville, Tennessee. Your boy was in Canada fighting the good fight in a third world country. But uh, I want to hear about Knoxville, boys. I want to hear about Guys are missing you. Guys are missing you. Yeah. I missed you boys too. No, uh, the fans. Oh. Yeah, yeah, fans. They were oh. coming up 77 oh, jerseys. I you guys Where's Taylor? Too. Where's Taylor? Where's Taylor? Yeah. It's like, oh, the boys got a little family matter. He's attending to. Can, can I get a pause real quick? Sure. Did you guys miss me? Of course. Oh, of course. All right, good. I was just making sure. I haven't yeah. seen you in over a week. I know. This is the longest it's gone in a long yeah. time. But go ahead. The boys were missing me. Blah, blah, blah. Say more good things about me. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good weekend, though. Knoxville, the vibes get better every time. They. Is Knoxville the number one setup, I think, for tailgating? Don't ask me. I know, I know. Yeah, you're biased. What do you think, Mitch? You've been at some different ones now. Uh, I think of the ones we've been to, like that little, what was it, like Circle, circle Park. That that was definitely the coolest. Um, I do think Notre Dame has the best, like, parking lot kind of vibe. Yeah. Because that, that is, they're just people everywhere. Michigan's um, something similar. T uh, Tennessee's similar with Georgia. Where a lot of the action is right there outside the stadium, uh, I think yeah, Tennessee is awesome, man. I wasn't was at a the good Georgia time. one, so I don't know. It oh, was interesting man. to hear the guy at Georgia talk about the different fan bases and how they are, and he was giving flowers to Tennessee like they're the loudest and one of the most rudest fan bases, which is what you want when you have an opposing guy in a conference talk about your school. They get rowdy. They get rowdy. The Hill was a great time. Some old dude, I think his name was Daniel David. Master. Yeah, the drill. We had a drill sergeant sneak in and be like, you know, what do you, what do you guys do? What's going on here? Had nothing to do. He, he knew nothing about busting with the boys, but he saw uh, a set of ten get a set of ten of push-ups with JP. He saw us all down doing push-ups. All he saw was push-ups, so he wanted to come over and get in on the action. So I was like, oh, you want to do push-ups? Like, how, how many are we talking? He's like fifty. Yeah. <laughs> he did fifty like, straight. Golly. We all had to. Me, JP, and this man are down here, and then by like forty, I'm shaking like a dog shit in peach seeds. I'm fucking pushing up. I'm rattling. Good I'm having, quote. I'm having to go ass up, hiked in the air to like rest for a minute, and he he just reps all the way to, to fifty. We got to fifty, and we stood there, and then he goes, "Oh, let's hit ten more." He crushed him, bro. This old man drills. Was he wearing sergeant. a sweater? Was he did he was he jacked up? Or was, was he like he had a nice physique. like a, like a Santa Claus type beard going? Like he wasn't in mid mid season form yet. But just enough to know, like, oh, he could get hired in December easily. Like, it seems like he's growing it out. But he just wanted to come over and do push-ups. He's newly engaged. Uh, his lady was down from the Northeast. He's showing her her first ever tailgate college football experience. We saw a few of those. Some virgins popping their cherry in the college football world at Tennessee. And I think Tennessee is the, is a premier place to do that. Like, it was a, it was a good time. Then we went to, uh, was it the Circle? 
Circle Park. Circle Park. Jack took us over there. Garrett's dad had a tailgate going, but everyone's just like, they do the walk there, uh, the team walk, all the tailgates, similar to that Georgia vibe. You know, when you're kind of, you kind of know, like, everybody's close to each other on campus. You're going from tailgate to tailgate. Everybody's mm -hmm. like, oh, come over here, come over here. Oh, that's a good one over here. But the camaraderie was high. Then we went on to the field. I mean, Tennessee treats the boys well. I love that, man. Oh, yeah, show the, show the old man. Look at that. Look at that, dude. Yeah, he's a jack motherfucker right yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, look. Oh, look at that out. Yeah, no, those things are peeking out. What y'all boys doing over here? Like, he literally put, looked at his girl and said, watch this. Hold it. Hold it. He goes at, like, well. Hey, that head down, Willie. Look at the knee. Hit the ground. <laughs> that was it. That was when we hit oh, however many it was. Dog. I'm so glad that was filmed. We said all of you guys had to hit that. I was like, dang, I, there's probably no video of it. Dude, that reminds me of uh, Cabo San Lucas. There's a uh, Mango Deck. You've been to Mango Deck. So they do, uh, they have like a, you know, their background is essentially the beach and the ocean, but they have like this base stage and they do like, you know, wet t-shirt contests, like a flip cup contest, a whole bunch of cont contests. And uh, in it, they do like push-up contests. And the owner, I believe this is the owner of the bar, is this like dude in his 50s, maybe, maybe even 60s, who's just shredding. He sits in the back of Mango Deck and then they do the push-up competition. They always set it up where like they get like the big, like the, the you know, test the dudes on the test and all that, all muscled out. The young cats yeah, in their the, 20s, low trying, 30s, yeah, ready to go. Trying to show it all off. Hey, why don't you come up here and do couple push-ups? Everyone's like jacked up about headbands on, no no shirts, small little swim trunks. And then they, there's always like one more seat. And then they're like, hey, how, how about you? And they get like the old guy. And the guy literally cranks out like 75 every single time. I've never, I've been there 10 times. I've never seen him lose once. He kills it. He yeah. crushes did he, it. Did you see it? Oh, well, was, we no, went, when I'm we went saying, to go. Yeah, yeah he but did I, I was sick, so I didn't get to see the push-up thing. Did you leave before that one? I think I did. I, I was I was there for Charles' first dance and Bree's flip cup. But then after yeah, that, maybe, I, I maybe it happened out. later. But yeah, the old guy went up there and murdered everybody. That's awesome. So he kind of plays with them. Like when that old guy was like, oh, we'll do 50. And then he hits 50. He's like, oh, might as well do 10 more. Just not even breathing heavy. JP and I were like slowing down. Like I was shaking in the car on the way over to the stadium because I was like, yeah, we maxed out. <laughs> That's so awesome. You, you were talking to the people right after, like like the fans that are coming by, and you were like out of breath. And yeah. Like, I can't breathe. They're like asking, like, hey, you guys just saw what just happened. This old man just mopped us. <laughs> <laughs> mopped us. And you know, he had to walk away from that thing just feeling like, the greatest. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, you guys are famous? You had a little show? Like, you know, he didn't know what was really going on, but you knew he knew you were somebody of some sort of importance. Yeah. And he was like, let me get an edge over this man that he'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No he, question. He, he took advantage of you. He did. He did. How but did hats JP, off to him. How did JP crank it out? Uh, he was, yeah, he was solid. You know? I think we all hit, I think we all might have hit 60, didn't we? I think y'all hit 50 once, hit 50, and then the guy looks at y'all, and y'all are about to go down, and he goes, 51, and... But you guys also held a 10 second hold between like 45 and 50. So Something like that. You it had was... to be. I bet you're getting like right around that 43, 44 range, being like, please God, rip these out as fast as possible. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. The little sticks were twerking, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you what, dude. JP's endurance and the push ups have gotten insane. He's the push up. He's the push up king. Man. He is. He is he a push up king. He out like 32 before then with other, other like actual fans yeah really yeah he was just on the ground like half push up dealing. tuesday man he's he's I, working he's growing the brand i love the fact that people are buying into it too like people legit know it's a thing now and do it we got to get jason mccordy on next he's the he's been the next one in our in our site yeah 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 so i'm working on that for him a little bit right now play with J uh, jason play with him in the titans oh yeah so, uh, a fan came up to jp and goes hey man no offense but i don't know how the fuck you got k adams on your push up <laughs> tuesday man <laughs> That's awesome. K's about the brand, dude. JP goes same reason that you, same reason as you. You follow me. Yeah, he said that. Yeah. Well, he said it afterwards, but when we all laughed, so like, <laughs> we want to pretend like he did say that. He bought it. Yeah. We should have just left it at that. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll tell you, K. Uh, K was spreading the good word on Up and Adams. Shout out to her and her show, dude. She was talking about uh, slips and picks because she was with Delaney in London. Yeah. And so she was talking all about how Delaney's like. I guess during the show, it's like, Taylor, who's got the best record? The what, what, what's the record's uh, the Mule's record? And I was like, oh shit. It's, they're out there talking about it. Yeah. Moving. Delaney's spreading them. a good word. Delaney's been uh, more on social media, too. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Ever, ever since he's been with the boys, he's... Uh, he's Gotta get him going. He's Gotta got a get little him more going. Of a presence. He's got a little more of a presence on social media, which is awesome to see. Boys in London, too. Went and did the show Wednesday, Thursday. Flew out to London. The boys yeah. out there grinding. So shout out to Delaney as yeah, well, doing dude. Doing slips. He was on the Pro Football Football Show, busting with the boys out in London. Like... 
the mule's working, and all the reviews on them. Everybody leaving comments about them. Love it's the all mule. good news. We got to get the we got to get the mule going. Yeah, we got. Well, the mule is going. We got to get everybody yeah. else involved too. I think uh, interns aren't looking too hot in their record right now, are they, Jackie? Or not? Are you or not? I don't know. I don't, I'm asking. I don't know. I know the Eagles, my six and a half, obviously didn't win. Our mortal lock, though, crushed over on Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry rushing yards. Easiest lock of the week. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, I thought Lamar didn't hit. Lamar had 62 rushing yards. Oh, it's awesome. I, I, knew, was I, knew, our, him, bro. I knew that parlay was in bad shape when, when there was two <laughs> Titan players with over rushing yards. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And if it wasn't for Derrick's long run, too, that, that would have been... A rough one. Yeah. But thank goodness he got it. Should we get into our good, bad, and the ugly since we're trying to, we're starting to trend towards a little bit of football, a little, a little bit, bit of football, a little bit of ball, a little bit of ball yeah. talk? Yeah. So you guys' weekend was good. Yeah. I yeah, we, love yeah, that. Weekend was great, man. We got back. Dude, we got back at what time? I, I stayed in Knoxville. Yeah. You stayed in Knoxville. What? Back at like 7 30, 7 45. I feel like you guys, I think seven. I was time, like, I was getting, I was cruising time. back. Really? It. Was, it Stopping at Bucky's and then like get that car nap ride, car nap in the in the car on the, on the way home. Yeah. Just, oh, you guys. So you guys stopped off at Bucky's. Yeah, because I got back at like seven. Hit there, some Chick Fil A. You almost, drive solo? Yeah. There was almost some words. Did you snag one of the boys? They uh they were already out there. I know, but if Jack just stayed and then mentioned them, they all went back. And when I got out, nobody was like nobody was thinking like, hey, I'll go with Will. I didn't say anything. I didn't ask a question. Cause I'm thinking in my head, I'll probably have to take one of them to one of their cars. Like yeah. I'll just cruise home. That's why. That's why we didn't drive with you. Cause we were like, we figured that you just wanted to go home, and you would have to stop at the shop to drop us off. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I heard Mitch said there was almost some words in the car on the way back. I, I don't know if he wants to explore. What them. words? Sorry, words. Sorry, I did totally just start moving over to Will, and I noticed I, I cut you off. Some of us were trying to fall asleep in the car, and some of us were watching a hockey game on their phone, screaming at the phone, with no social awareness that. Some of us are trying to fall asleep. Do we want to say names? No, we don't have to say names. <laughs> I would like to say names. Say names, Jack. Oh, no, I wasn't there. Like, I want to hear someone say names. Oh. You, you have can I guess? a story where you can say names. Uh, can I guess? Is it the same name? Same name. You let him make it. You stall him out. You stall him out. Stall him out? What is that, like, say his I mean, name? stall him out. Let him make it. Like, let him make it. Don't kill him. That means that's what stall him out. Oh, you really? Stall him out? No, I don't. That's why I looked over at Mitch. Like, I, is he gonna say it or not? <laughs> I, I had no idea. I'm thinking not stall him out. That's like uh, I felt like uh, you learned that in the locker room. All the you brothers know. be like, "Hey, stall him out, come stall him out." I'm like, "Okay, I guess that means let him make it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, I guess you stalled him out. We're not gonna say the name. <laughs> is it who I'm thinking of? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good. Let's get into uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, shall we? Shall we? Before we do. Before we do, let's talk about game time, dude. If you are looking to go to a nice little... Can you zoom in just a little bit more? I know it's terrible. I'm sorry. Just zoom in, just zoom in just a little bit more. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> okay. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying a ticket to your next big event, dude. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theaters. Theater yeah. events near you, dude. If you just all you have to do is download this app, it's incredible, dude. You get the last minute tickets, it's the most incredible thing. I use it all the time. I went to a uh, Kelowna Rockets game this past weekend when I was in Canada. Boom, bing, bang, boom. Game time app was no problem at all. What are uh, okay, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, uh, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute tickets. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With Zone Deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. That's huge, especially in this economy right now. And the Game Time the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section... And row for less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Is that real? 110%? They're going to give you what you paid plus 10%? Yeah. That's what it says in the read. So if anything, you need to use this just to see if you can get them. Just see if you can just snipe them one, one or two times. Uh, take the guesswork out work out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code BUSSIN. B-U-S-S-I-N for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app. Create the account and use code BUSSIN. That's going to get you 20%, $20 off. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BUSSIN for $20 off. Last minute tickets, low prices, guaranteed. Let's let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this week, 
shall we? Love to. Well, you got. You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I'll start it off. I can start off. Do you, where you want to go first? No, no, no. Doesn't matter to me. Do you want me to rattle off the whole list? Uh, then we dive into it, or we both rattle off lists. I like when you rattle between? it off. I like when you rattle off because I, I feel like oh, 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 yeah, that's good. Uh, I don't know about that one. Okay. Uh, my first good, uh, Bucky's. Got to shout out Bucky's. Any chance you get, I bought a little Rue, a spooky little stuffed animal while I was there. She loves it. A ghost, boo. She knows how to say boo right now, which that's, is a lot huge. of fun. Um, Aaron Rodgers, six weeks post op. The man is. I could come back and play this year, and I with that, the Jets could make a push. Like they look tough. Jets defense, insane. They play what six quarterbacks? Uh, Salah he rattled he rattled it off. He rattled off all the quarterbacks they play. Was it Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, you know other great quarterbacks? And he's like, <laughs> and he basically said like, yo, we've embarrassed all of them. And that that gets your piss hot, dude. I love when Salah's talking his shit. Uh, Jim Schwartz, his defense, he's got those boys rolling. There they beat the 49ers. Like Jim Schwartz is undefeated against Kyle Shanahan when they're both calling games against each other. And the Schwartz defense in Cleveland right now. They are fucking, they're making, they're keeping themselves at pace with everybody else in the AFC to kind of make a late push. Who knows if they're going to actually be there in the end. Uh, Jaguars looking like that, looking like the team I thought they'd be at the beginning of the year. They've rattled off, what, three straight now, two in London. Beat the, uh, beat the breaks off the Colts this past weekend. Beat the breaks off. Um, Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan. He's the director of the Haunting on Hill House. He's got another one out right now. It's called like, uh, what is that new series out he has? I literally had it. Uh, I was thinking about it. It's like a full, a full, full house. That's a, that's a show from the nineties. Fall of the house of Usher. The fall of the house of Usher. I started that last Friday and it is a good series. He's got the Haunting Hill house, Bly Manor, Midnight Mass. Uh, I think another one I didn't really watch last year. Midnight Club. I don't think I watched Midnight Club. And then this one was, what is, pull that up again, Jay. Fall of the house of Usher. Yeah, Fall of the House of Usher. And so far, two episodes in, good. And I think it's going to end well because it's got an 8.1 IMDb and I'm a big IMDb guy. And last but not least of the good, Big Ten West is wide open. The Big Ten West is wide open right now. It is. It truly is. Go Big Red. Go Big Red. Yeah. GBR. GBR, then GBO. Then? G that was... GBR, GBO. And then? That's it. That's it. No go blue? No. We, 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 we've had this conversation. I know. Welcome back if you're back on GBR. I mean, it can change at any moment. It, no, it literally changed leading up to and the, and, and the Bustin' Bowl, and now I'm back. And I pray to God we get to have another Bustin' Bowl in December. I know. I know we, we, we could, we could make our way back to Indy, but yeah. one game at a time, one play at a time. Well, one game as at a time. As far as leading up, I mean, yeah, you're devil faced when we lost to Minnesota. We lost to a hockey school. I get it. You're, you're on big red right now. Right. I get it. You're, but you, you're, you're you, you remember why I said I was being a little nasty towards Nebraska. It's all, it's all good. Do you, do you remember what I said? No, it's all good. It's just all, it, it, I promise it's all good. You're, you're on GBR right now. People that aren't part of uh, every one of Car uh, Will and I's conversations. The reason why I was being a little nasty towards Nebraska leading up to it is because I started to reflect on. University of Michigan, which is where I went to school, and Nebraska, and how much I've supported Nebraska in the past. And then I was like, you know, now that I'm finally becoming a fan, I'm going to jump on, onto this whole thing. I'm starting to realize that when I look back, Will's not saying a whole lot of go blue. Will's not really buying into Ann Arbor or University of Michigan like I have. Maybe I need to s stir it up and switch it up a little bit. I did do that. And then after the Bustin' Bowl, after that demonstrative Yeah, big attack, time win. That was... Four quarters of fuck you football by yeah. Michigan Wolverines. Damn near killed us. Yeah, yeah damn near. However, once that ended, I was like, dude, let me go back to supporting my boys because I do love Nebraska. Which I think is the wild, by incredible. the way. You wanted that intro. You wanted to be nasty for a good 15 minutes. And apparently, looking back at the tape, like you're playing both ways. And it's like, oh, I could have sat in on that conversation. Yeah, you could have sat in the conversation. But and I, because I, originally, I thought, man, it's going to be funny when I'm super nasty about it. But then... As I was like getting into it and was gonna say all the things, I was like, you know what, dude, the the play happened. We saw like it was such an ass beating that's mm -hmm. like I can't really be nasty because then it just then it just becomes bullying, and I don't want to do that. I, I that's why I'm back supporting Nebraska, and I would love if my best friend also supported the University of Michigan, who is every bit of looking like the number one team in college football right now. Yeah, Michigan looks good. You guys look fucking tough. Okay, so we're not gonna say go blue. No, look, I, like we're still in the thick of it right now. Like Nebraska still got a shot to come back. I'm not going to be chanting. A different where the game's over, right? But, but I'm not going to be chanting "Go Blue." You know what I mean? Like, if you guys get to one second, Jack. If you guys get to like 
you know, the last couple of years, you talk about the non-support of Go Blue. Like, I've been Go Blue up until you guys lay an egg in the college football playoff. Yeah, but we're, but, but now it's become this thing where it's like, no, you're basically saying fuck blue to me. Essentially, I think I've you've never, I've never, no, me. I've never said fuck blue. Like, you, you play so you hard. You said at, I'm praying you, on your downfall. I'm praying on the opportunity was, for your downfall. That was based on the nastiness. Uh, uh, like with the win and be like, hey, I want 15 minutes to be nasty on the pod. Coming in with a thought of you went 15 minutes of being nasty on the pod. Yeah. So I've got to play my villain era of being like, yo, fuck blue. So you went in the villain era and then what, halfway through us having that big argument, did you not, did I not say you got to watch the tape? I said, you got to watch the tape on it. But that's, but the tape thing is irrelevant because you were saying you were going to be, you know, you're going to be. And say, I didn't. Actions speak louder than words. I know. I've, I feel like I've been consistent with Michigan outside of being like, uh, now I just wait till you guys fall. I'll be there to, I'll be there to catch you. Trust me with mm -hmm. the knife. But up until then, like I've been like a consistent kind of medium, like above medium with go blue. Oh, you wouldn't I've never, I've never been like over overly like go blue, go blue, go blue. Like you have go big red, go big red, go big red. And the moment you realize that I'm not up there with you, then you bring it down and go the complete other way and go negative on big red. Versus like, I'm just, I'll just stay in the middle. And yeah, that conversation was like, yeah, I hope Michigan fails, but I'm, I'm still like sitting here today. I'm like, Hey, it's all good. I get it. You want to root for big red right now. That's awesome. We'd love to have you. We love to have you. But me being like, yeah, go blue. Well, I won't go blue to win this weekend. Like I'm, I've never been like, oh, I'm rooting for fucking, I'm um, blue, hard, heavy, unless they're pushing for the national title. And based on the conversation we had last time when it got, when it got tight, that's when I was like, oh, I'm off blue. So you're off blue still. I because am. You're talking about consistency. I, like I, I played. Here, here's where I, I would say I've been medium to above medium. You've definitely not been. I would say hardly medium on Michigan. On I'm on rooting for for Big Red, for a couple of reasons. One, you're my fucking guy. Two, that fan base needs a guy like me right now. So I'm going to come in there and toot the horn from a different school. Yeah, that we don't we don't yes, need. Yes, you it. do. Yes, you do. Because and, and the proof is after the third and one when it was seven zero in the first quarter. That's when I looked around the stadium and it was quiet as a church mouse. On third and one, I thought, okay, these fans, these fans need a little bit more. They need some more help because right, you right. and your I did, boys I did the post game are, pantry and talked about that. Okay, well, I'm just saying, I was very consistent and rooting rooting for Nebraska, and then once I reflected, I was like, okay, no. So I did go the other way a little bit, but I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I'm and glad. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. And I yeah. like maybe if we took a look at Ryan Holiday, ego is the enemy. We lay down our egos for a little bit and we go back. So here's my thought on Michigan. Michigan looks like the best team in college football. You guys are tough. You've ever since you beat Nebraska's ass, you beat, um, basically the last two weeks you've poured it on. Since Harbaugh's been back, we've been undefeated against the spread. Right, right. But, but even when you guys played Rutgers, like Rutgers was, or Rutgers or Maryland, one of them, they were battling up until the second half when that Rutgers QB started just throwing picks. That was like, last year. No, no. You guys, who'd you guys play this year? We played Rutgers. Yeah, September 23rd. We were battling. It's 31-7. Yeah. Do you the want game, me to finish? Do you want game, me to keep going? The game, the game you're referring to is scroll up one. I believe it was Bowling Bowling. No, Green. yeah. You, look, 31-6. Okay, well, we watched that the whole way home and knew that that's, it was like a close game. you're referring to. But also, Rutgers was competing until the second half. In Nebraska, you beat her ass from start to finish. Minnesota, you beat their ass from start to finish. Indiana, you beat their ass from start to finish. You guys are now looking like the best team in college football. The other games, like, I was trying to say, like, it wasn't you weren't beating their ass from start to finish. Now you guys are. Like, I would be fired up to be where, in sitting in your seat because you guys look fucking tough. But, uh, you know, I know you're like one of me about, oh, go blue. You, you guys got this way. Michigan State, you guys are going to roll them. Who gives a fuck? Wait until you guys start, like, it'll start festering. What I'm pumped about this week is Penn State, Ohio State. And that's you guys got a Penn phenomenal State. game. Yeah. But that's my whole pitch. That's I'm my whole premise see, around. I'm anxious to see uh, what, what your vibe is when Penn State comes around. Yeah, that, that's fine. I, I think I'm going to lean into just being an objective, like, critical thinker. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a bad friend move, but I get it. Buddy, I've been on your side up in, like, I, I get it. No, no, I, I understand that. All right, as long as we're all good, as long as we just I, no, know. I, I don't want to say we're all good. I was just saying I understand where you're coming okay, from. Okay, that's all I need. <laughs> all right, that's how you want to look at it. Um, the other, the other stuff you talked about, though, the Jets, their defense, incredible, dude. I, yeah. I thought they were, uh, they've, they've legitimately got a shot. And then seeing Aaron Rodgers, 34 days post-surgery, throwing a football with a, a slight limp, not even a bad limp, like, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, and the uh, Jets defense, too, I forgot, but their top, three corners were out like they had depth on that fucking jets defense bro yeah. playing playing their fucking tail or playing their flipping tails off playing their We've flipping heard so much at this point doesn't matter anymore okay yeah yeah 
the okay. first five minutes, and then you playing their flipping tails off. The Jets defense is like, and oh, who is it? Quentin Williams is linebacker. Is that the brother? Or, uh, Quincy Williams. He's an animal, bro. He's an animal. But Jets defense fires me up. I think that they can like. I think they can get back in the division picture. I think so too. I think when we look back at our all the divisional standings, we said that that AFC East, is, that AFC East, right? Yeah, AFC East is where you can see three get in. Three get in. Three get in. Three get in. Uh, Jackie, you we you raised your hand. I said we'll get back to you. We're back to you. All good. All right. Perfect. I love that. Um, Who's your good? My good is uh, number thirteen for Stanford against Colorado. Two hundred ninety four yards and three TDs, dude. Uh, Louis Locks undefeated on Bet the Bus. First time ever hosting Bet the Bus, and we went undefeated. I mean, I don't think any of us expected that. It was pretty amazing. Um, that's big, that is that's yeah. a big move. I got here the Jets. I got Michigan covering since Jim Harbaugh's been back. Craig Reynolds, uh, Detroit wide receiver with that block downfield against Tampa Bay to spring his boy for a touchdown. That is football porn. I love that, that is, shout out. That's a that's good a, shout that's out. That's the shit you that go. You go, man. These guys are truly so bought into Detroit that I'm legitimately finding myself rooting for the Lions. Like, oh, that's awesome. And that's PM. awesome. They're good because if you look back at some episodes, I I am on record saying when I when the tenth overall pick came and Detroit Lions were picking, I prayed, legitimately prayed for them not to pick me. Mm-hmm. That's how bad the Lions were. That's how much I didn't want to be there. Now I'm like. That seems like a place that people want to go to and be at and like enjoy that culture and get after it and play hard nosed ball for Coach Campbell. And yeah. you're right too. And I love that you shout out the wide receiver, like the the schematics like that, because I know people watching. Like everybody sees the from the surface level who's playing well, who's not. But it's little things that like that that it truly sparks like a team to fucking flipping make a deep run and make a deep run because the boys are like, you know, they're in the film room shouting that out. And everybody's yeah. like, they're playing team ball. Yeah. They're pulling the tape and the coach is like, I love the touchdown. Let's, that's, that's great. But let's find out why we had the touchdown. Yeah. And then there's a big circle. That laser pointer is on Craig. Yeah. And that's what's that? Dude went to Kutztown. Did he? D two went to Cookstown. Cookstown. It's, it's a, like a Kutz. kind of K U T Z town. Okay. 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 They, uh, D two powerhouse in Pennsylvania. And my last, uh, my last, uh, the good is is probably my favorite good of the whole entire week, and that's Win Rebel Lawan traveling for twelve hours on Saturday afternoon and literally crushing it. Economy, sitting there rolling with the punches, going back and forth. Her routine's all messed up, and she was every bit of how like when you walk away from that situation where people are literally commenting, being like, "Your daughter's so well behaved," while wow, your daughter's so amazing, she did so great on this flight. Where you sit there and you think like. My my kid fucking rocks. She is well behaved. She shout is, out Winnie. Dude, Winnie, shout out you. Awesome. She was she was so incredible. I know we didn't talk about my weekend because we 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 kept starting over, but we did a lot. We did we've traveled a lot in the last couple of days, and so that that's my good dude. And I think the island is a team that fires me up more than the Detroit Lions right now. Yeah, I mean Eagles are gonna be fine. Niners are gonna be fine, but like you look at the look at the Lions, and it's like. Everyone's wondering, like, when are they contenders? It's like, yo, five and one. Like, what are we talking about? Like, they're in it. They're oh, yeah. Doing they're, they're, they are contenders. They are Super Bowl contenders. I'm, I kind of find myself rooting for the Jets. Raiders, yeah, Jets Raiders too. are bouncing back two in a row, which I think is big. That. I think time will still tell if they're, like, being a better team because they beat who? Patriots. Patriots and uh, who'd they beat last week? I don't know. But it was a good win. They were underdogs. Jackie boy, he, Jackie boy's pulling it up right now. Grinding. Packers. Nope. Packers. Yeah, it was Packers because it was Passaccia's yeah. homecoming. But they and have they have two good weeks. Now they got the uh well, they it looks like they have a bye. Oh, wait, no, that's this weekend. My my time Yeah, so they're gonna go three in a row. The Bears this week, then they got the Lions, the Lions which you'll kind of see if they take care of business against the Bears, then Monday night they rattle off three in a row. That's gonna be a big game to kind of show their measuring stick of where they're gonna be. Cause they gotta they got a they got a tough end of the schedule there. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I mean, you're in a tough, twice in four weeks. You're in a tough division. You're in a tough, tough division. division. And so I don't know what the expectations truly are for the Raiders this year. I think if you get 500, I think they well. What were they last with, year? With 17 games now, you're you're hoping you need it's a winning rough, season. Yeah. yeah. I think Coach McDaniel's needs a winning season because I think if he lost yesterday, his job would be being talked about. I believe. It has been talked about. But now that they're winning right now, you know, 
You just keep winning, man. Winning solves yeah. all problems. Winning solves all issues. Keep that, keep the pace, dude. Keep that 500 pace. And then, yeah, six and 11 last year. That's, they, I think you get, I mean, nine and eight, nine and eight, uh, you know, I mean, eight nine. That's what they want you. Yeah. I think, I think you're went, sitting like, okay, we saw promise. We saw direction. We mm -hmm. saw motivation. We're feeling good about it. Because last year they were a six and 11, but I think five games might've been within one score, mm -hmm. like a five, like blowing a fourth quarter lead type thing. So they've, they're like in the thick of it. They do. They just got to rattle off more wins. They got to keep winning. Mm -hmm. One one product that always wins is Proper Wild, dude. Uh, big news. Stop what you're doing. What's up? Oh, Proper Wild right here. Hey, stop what you're doing right now. Proper Wild has launched in 700 vitamin shops, vitamin shop stores across the country and are giving free, wait, free shots away to anyone that wants one for the next week. So right now, for the next week, you can go to a vitamin shop, 700 of them. And you can go get one of these beauties right here. Just click the link below. All you have to do is buy a shot, upload your receipt, and then they'll Venmo you for the amount paid. So you don't have to go to the store. You can literally just do this thing online. It's free stuff. We all love free stuff, dude. And it's, it really is, is incredible. Get your free shot at properwild.com slash free shot. Boom. That's an easy, that's an easy little ad too because I know people do get really upset about how many ads we have. But that's a nice little... Yeah, and bang, it's bang, clean boom. energy. Like everybody, you get your caffeine crashes in the middle of the day, you take Proper Wild like that is. It's clean energy, no artificial bullshit in there. Uh, you guys will love Proper Wild. Uh, question for the boys in the back, and I know this is, can I put you guys on the spot? Do you guys have any of the good over the weekend that you want to talk about? The good was being back in Knoxville for me. Just the homecoming. It's always good to be back in your town. Uh, I do have a bad. Start it off. Start off the bad. Well, hold on. Dimitri, do you have any good? Um... I guess our good was being able to come back Saturday night and just have fun Saturday night and go out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, booze bag yeah, Mitchie over there, dude. Knoxville was a time on Saturday night. Yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't stay, Mitch. I don't know why anyone. Yeah, he had, he had, I think he had some boys in town or something like that. They were, they were, like a housewarming party. yeah, a little yeah. housewarming party. They were going to get, na they were going to get wild at. You better say nasty again. I was about to. I kind of yeah. want to eliminate it from my verbiage right now. It's too much. Yeah, we say it a lot. It's a great word, but it is too much. Jackie, start us off with the bad, brother. This is in no way, shape, or form me coming at you, but this has to be talked about. The bad, trying to get working class Americans to pay a millionaire's fines on Twitter. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not a good look. I'm sorry. If, if the 49ers fan base is the fan base they claim to be, I think they'd have no problem all, all donating a dollar. And, and I, I think that's down, I, down, 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 down. And I have no problem with that. George Kittle, I think, signed like a Chubby's contract with like 2.5 million for this year. Next. And, and in California, that's 52% of that's do gone. It again too. But it just, to me, that's a lot of money. A dollar? No, $13,000. Yeah, you're right. As a whole, it's a lot. But if you have. So you're going to ask people who pay every single week, who spend their harder money to come watch you play, to then now pay more money because you wore a t shirt that said, fuck Dallas? No. I'm going to ask people to pay for somebody else, not for me. I'm just saying, Georgie's a boy. He's the heart and soul of that team. Why not just throw a dollar in for the guy? See that they can cook up. And then if you're a 49ers fan base, and let's say you get 14,000 fans to go sit there and put in a dollar, now you can sit there and put that in being like, look how big of a fan base we are. Look how look what we've done. Cincinnati Bengals, shout out them when they put a, uh, a GoFundMe together for DeMar Hamlin after the game last year. They put in their hard-earned hard money, and they get to put that as a, situation. as a badge of honor for them. And they look, look at us as a fan base as a whole. Look how, look how awesome we are in Cincinnati. Different situations, absolutely, but I think it'd be very cool if 14,000 49ers fans, which is not even a quarter of that stadium, puts one dollar in, gets the Ven uh, not the Venmo, the GoFundMe going for the boy. I think that's sick. So I'm about it. I love your bad. I appreciate you uh, checking the boy, but one dollar's not Again, a whole lot. Not yeah, not coming to anyone. Also, Dean can come on at 12:30. Perfect. Oh, perfect. I love get, that. Get Dean on some of these calls that need to go. That need to go Nebraska's way. I think he was only on the uh, Minnesota game. I think they were on Fox. Oh, I do have a bad, though, and it goes down on... You have another I bad. I forget his name, the Giants OC, going into the first half last night. That's not... I don't know if that's on him. I have that on my bad as well. Who's it on, then? Is it on I'm, Taylor? What... I was hearing, or just what they were saying, is that Taylor checked it at the line of scrimmage. Okay, I really thought you were... I was like, what are we... Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, yeah, no, I get oh, it now. Yeah, my bad. Um, 
I just, just be being an idiot. I think it's just a bad overall. We'll get it. We'll get into that one. I I have that one on there. I was wondering, Jackie, why you pulled up my Twitter. <laughs> I saw you see that. Yeah. Like, oh, and, I, and in my head, I was like, oh, I had to talk about the weekend. Then I had that little weekend post about bet the bus. I was like, oh, he might be popping that up for a clip later. <laughs> and little did I know. For, uh, what'd you go four zero and one? Uh, one pushers. Yeah, win. one pushers to win four on one. Yep. You don't lose money. No. No. Lo- no. no we took money. the over two in that push, so it technically five zero and one. Not the uh, Oregon lost by three in the line. It was their underdogs by three. Did you have six? Pi- did you put six picks in bet the bus? I did say. I think I said on the show that I was going over as well. I don't know if I don't think it was in there in the graphic. You, you picked the spread and an over in one of the games. Yeah, it had to be Oregon. I think Oregon Washington was the one we thought was a pretty. And that, spicy the over, over hit. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. So five zero and one. And the over in uh, the North Carolina Miami game also hit. Which I believe you suggested you suggested as well. Hey, Mitch is, we might be six zero and one. Mitch is uh Mitch is three and zero on his last three overs. Being like, hey, I don't know, but if the spreads the move this week, but I think the overs a lock. He's three and zero in his last three. You know what I'm noticing in gambling? Being the, this is my first year, obviously jumping into it. Overs hit hard in college football, uh, fast and often, and the unders hit hard in the NFL. I was 4-0 yeah. in our pump and dump. and uh, Vegas starts to catch on. Like, some of these lines yeah. will start getting moved to where it's like, oh, man, I need these schools to score like over 70. 69 points now. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. We'll see as it develops a little bit more into the 69. Nice. Yeah. And now, because I was thinking the same thing with the NFL. I was like, man, I need to start getting in on these some of these unders, man. Right? Because I'm like, you last I, know they're gonna, I know they're going to catch on. It's going to be like over-unders going to be like 41 and a half. Well, that, dude, I had two unders that were 41 and a half, and they all hit. Both hit. They both do. Uh, I'll jump into my bad. Uh, my bad, the 49ers against the Bra- the Browns. They should have walked away with that game. I know Debo got hurt. I know uh, Christian McCaffrey got hurt, but you got to feed Kittle one one catcher at one reception. Like, let that boy eat a little mm-hmm. bit. That's that's tough. Titans during international games. They're 0-2. It's, not only was that game abysmal, but it's it was boring as fuck to watch. It was just like, damn, boys. Like, you just want so badly for them to just crush it and it just... There's just little mistakes. Kyle Phillips, love Kyle Phillips to death, but like the one second left in the half, you just got to let that ball go away. And obviously it's so much easier said than done. Situational stuff, you're there, you just want to catch it and have it be good. But like, damn, because let's say that ball does go on the one, it rolls to the one, yeah, stop it. Now you have to do a tush-push type of situation to even, you know, get into the half. You can't take a knee because it's going to be a safety, but that's, um, that's it. Anyway, uh, more bad. The interns talking me into Chiefs over with their silver tongue. They put out some really good, some really well said stats at me. I was going to take Chiefs under. I ended up taking the over and it, and it didn't hit on Slips and Picks 500. Uh, the flight attendant that went to hand me my snacks on my third flight of the day and wouldn't extend her arm past the aisle row. I was sitting in the window seat and she's like, snacks? And I was like, yeah, she would love some snacks. And I go to put my hand out halfway. I'm like halfway to the, through the middle seat over my daughter's face. And she like held it there. She went T-Rex arm? She went T-Rex arm. And I, and I, it was a good enough time where I was like, are you going to put your arm out? And she just looked at me with a devious look. And I was like, I had to do the, like I had to almost pull the lat trying to get, get the snack away. So that, that's, that's bad ball. That's bad ball. And then um, Tampa Bay's record when they're in the cream school uniforms. Yeah, that's that's tough. what the, the flight attendant thing. I know. The cream school uniforms. The oh. flight attendant one smells like white privilege, but. <laughs> she was she wasn't white. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I told you I'm 35% Mexican. But you also also, dude, you need to like we all have jobs to do, right? True. And we all have a great relationship back there. But if someone something was slipping, we would be able to have the dialogue be like, hey, you got to be better at X, Y, and Z. Same thing goes for me. If you say I need to do something better. As a flight attendant, dude, you are it's customer service. Your customer service. You, and you're, not, the you're, you're the safety, the customer service. You are the show when you're at 30,000 feet in the air. Yep. You come out, brother. You should be dishing th- th- things out. Be like, Oprah, hey, everybody, look under your chair. And, oh, snacks. Like, that's that's what you're fucking looking Hope for. Oh, that's your pamphlet. Can you? Yeah. Are you good on this emergency exit right. row? Yes. Yeah, verbal yes from you. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, sweetie. Boom, boom, boom. Spice it up. Charisma. Charm. That's what you want with your flight attendants. Now, you, you can be having a tough day. I get it. We've all had it. But I'm sitting on my third flight. And I'm going my 12 hours into into this You're traveling. You're the customer. I You're am the customer. customer. Yeah, yeah. It's and, customer and for that business. reason, uh, for that reason, honey, you've made it on my um my bad list. But the cream sickle uniform record is 20, 20, Oh, sorry. Oh, and twenty four. Are they? Oh, I thought they've won one time. Oh, and twenty four. 
Because I want to say according to Mitchy stats, I saw a clip from uh, like Levante talking about how he's you know he's before the game started he was proud to be part of the only team that's won in a creamsicle uni. I mean they have this is moral three story. winning seasons in a creamsicle. Moral of the story. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's three part of the one winning season with the. Levante did not play well. Okay. I thought you were saying just overall them ever wearing. Overall, they're they are not good at all. The first three seasons, yeah, yeah. The, I the stat was the first three season seasons they ever wore them. Yeah. They were zero and twenty six. If those, and it's mm. funny too because those uniforms, I look at those uniforms as their alternates. And go, oh, those are dope. If those were their everyday uniforms, though, they would be ugly uniforms. And that's the fun thing about alternative uniforms. Yeah. I that's I do like that. Like uh, the Steelers bumblebees, those are hideous. But because they wear it once, if you're a player wearing them, you're like, oh, it's kind of sick we're wearing this, even though everyone looks like ass in them. Yeah. Uh, Big Cat, he had a funny thing last week. He was saying, like, creamsicle unis are, like, where you're like, oh, sick. Like, hell yeah. And then you see the team go out on the field, and you're like, ah, this doesn't look very tough. This doesn't look very good. We're about to get our ass whooped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that, dude. You want to hit your bed? Yeah, I can oh, hit my bed. Did you want to touch any of my bed? I don't think so. I felt like we touched. I felt like we hit the beds. I uh, like got hit the beds. We hit the beds. What was your last bed? The, uh, the, the, the chair? The cream skulls. Yeah, we hit yeah, those. Yeah. Titans in London. Two and four going into a bye week. I think, yes, although the Titans are 0-2 in London, that first game in London was like the boys went for two at the end and didn't get it. Chargers. Um, very different type of loss yesterday. I, I did. I thought that they were flat. They were like 0 for on third down going into halftime. And I'm thinking like, you know, Vrave's just like, you know, we're going to find out. We're going to find out who loves football in the second half. Make a right. decision. Like, here's the bad news. Doesn't get any worse than what just happened. The good news, you're only down 15. You guys can decide. Yeah. And kind of like walk out. Like one of those types of speeches. Right. And then, you know, KB and Jeff. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Trying to rally the boys. Yeah, rally, rally the, the boys. boys. Um, Anthony Richardson injury. The boy might be out for an extended period of time. I think that is not good in Indianapolis. We're calling it season ending. Yeah, I know. Because I think he's got like six opinions. And, you know, some of the big dogs. that they're, you, you know how that stuff gets. Like once mm -hmm. you get a couple... Once you get a couple opinions that kind of like, hey, you should get surgery, like looking out for your best interest, it's kind of an unbiased opinion versus like the team saying, hey, you know, you could maybe play through this. Like if you're a young cat, especially Anthony Richardson, he's going to be a franchise name for the end of time. Like if it's me and it's up for debate, six, uh, six opinions and a couple are telling you to get surgery, me personally, hindsight 2020, your boy's getting the surgery. Yeah. That you got to get the surgery. But I think that's a tough spot to be in for the Colts. I think Minshew, he's a stud, but I don't think like, I don't think that they can, I think their playoff hopes dwindle without Anthony Richardson. Yeah, because with uh, Gardner Minshew, you think Jacksonville is going to be a redemption game for him. That's the reason why I went Colts uh, plus four and a half on slips and picks. And it's like, you, this is, if he's going to show he's a, he's a dude. Yeah. Take it out on the team that obviously, inevitably said, you're not our guy. Right. You know, right. that's a good point. And I think right now it's like you got the Jags and Houston looking like the two teams oh, coming out of the Houston. South. They are they need to be part of the good as well. Yeah, there's the team that balling. everybody said was dead, including myself. And CJ even tried to throw a pick, and then they stripped him and got the ball back. Right, right. I did have one more good. I I forgot about my good. My other good. It was going to be my nuts. That's why I kept bringing it up. Was uh, you Delaney and Jersey Jerry making a quick pivot and getting the podcast that done? That was week. yeah. That was like literally saw Jerry in the hallway, and I was like, hey, would you mind? Like, I know we're talking, we're talking, you know, can, no spoilers. Um, right. Do you mind going in and doing this busting with me? And he was like, yeah, I'm down, whatever you, whatever you want. Whatever no, you, you guys, guys I, want. I watched it. You guys did a great job. So that was, that was and one Delaney of my was on a little bit of a lag on the Zoom. And so there are times where I'm like, Ass. you say something, you just wait for a second to know, like, you know, should I be keeping an energy? Do I need to fall back? And like, hopefully somebody comes in and says something. Because it, it was a... We threw that thing together. We threw that thing together. I saw that the boys, you guys did a good job. I didn't watch the tail end of it. Um, but I was like, I think you guys might see a, a post show because we missed on a couple segments we had to hit on. But yeah, that was a, that was a team effort. That was a team effort. Good team effort. So that's, that's a shout out to all the boys, man. That's awesome. My final bad. The SEC is bad this year. You know what? I'm going to say that. Uh, no, hold on. Hold on. Can, can we do? Can we jump into that bottom one you got right there on the list, uh, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. Throw that, bring that up, and I'll, I'll, I'll spice it up with that one, because that can be one we talk about. All right, my my final bad is going to be a, my overly direct take presented by DirecTV. DirecTV is the ultimate destination for pro football. It's where fans get their football fixed throughout the season, whether you're watching games live on TV or streaming at 
app, DirecTV has you covered. You can get DirecTV without a satellite. Stop compromising. Start watching football. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. And here's my overly direct take, and it's in my bad category. The SEC is bad this year. The SEC is bad this year. Outside of Georgia, and by the way, Georgia only beat Vanderbilt by 17 points. And Vanderbilt is a bottom-of-the-barrel team. Was, I thought it was 11. I thought it was 31-20. I thought it was 37-20. That that's an easy 1-7. Like, that's yeah, a close. Yeah, that's, that's an easy little deal. Step. Because I actually watched the highlights of that game. Vanderbilt scored first. And then they, I think they scored, like, a bunch unanswered. Vanderbilt, where's, that? where's Vanderbilt at? 37-20. Nice. Either way, 17 points. Like, they don't cover. Like, this is a bottom-of-the-barrel team. And if you look at the records and who's performing well, the second-best team in the SEC could arguably be Mizzou. And Mizzou is a Big 12 team. Like, mm -hmm. let's not get it twisted. Mizzou is a Big 12 team. And if you look at the parity in the SEC this year, Alabama being your second-best team, highly ranked, barely beats Arkansas. Barely beats Arkansas, and that's a bottom. This is a 2-5 and five Arkansas team. Like, this is not a good Arkansas team. That is my hot take. South Carolina, giving up. They should they should have beat Florida for the love of God. They should no, have beat they should have beat Georgia. Yeah, but I, I digress. That is my take. The SEC is bad this year. Did you also see, this is right before we came on, Brock Bowers, tied in for Georgia stud, possible season ending. He's having ankle surgery. No. All year. Dude, I did see. Awesome for Tennessee. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we got, we got to be careful on rooting on somebody getting hurt because oh, i'm not rooting on him. he i know he's, but he's being, happy, being happy Tennessee. about it. yeah yeah and i'm because trust me when i, I saw because he's a fucking stud he's, he's a stud tied in in college football and you remember us being up in the uh the suite with them boys being oh, like oh. that boy right there that's the boy that keeps all the boys in shit like he i was like i don't like the way you're saying it but <laughs> you're saying you're yeah, a little, yeah, strong, you're saying yeah. A little strong but dude because the reason why i say we got to be we got to be careful about that is i thought the same thing i was like oh that's really good for michigan <laughs> If they go the, and play. Because he, only because, like, he's one of the best he's offensive a, players he's a, he's in a, the he's country. A stud. Like, all around offensive players. Like, one of the best. He might be Kyle Pitts level drafted. That's how good he is. Actually, First round, yeah. Like a, a good NFL tight end, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, I don't know. Is Kyle Pitts not good, or is he just not being utilized correctly by Arthur Smith? I don't know. I saw some... a good week this week. I saw some tape that... You would think that, I think Big Cat, he was saying, like, he's just out there doing cardio. But then I saw a, fi a tape get put together on him trying to create separation. You, you know, saw Lofsky. the same one, Mitch? Maybe it was Arlovsky. Was it? I don't know. I, there's some, always Arlovsky. There's some a great going job. around where it's like, let's look at all the highlights of Pitts this year because everybody thinks, like, he's just being underutilized. He just wasn't getting separation. He wasn't getting open. Like, guys glued to him. He just wasn't. It didn't look like Kyle Pitts that everybody thinks that Kyle Pitts is looking yeah. like out there. Yeah, didn't he hurt his knee a couple years ago and he got knee surgery i'm not sure because i think sure. i think they're saying like something is not right with him because of the way he was running like pre-surgery and post-surgery is completely different yeah he's just not getting uh what are these just highlights of him yeah, just from this, from yesterday. Mm. but yeah, he, yeah, yeah we got a ball game yesterday right what's his name brock powers brock, Bowers. brock, brock Bowers. powers BD. what a name i know and dude he's and he's got He's got the stuff, dude. He's got speed. He's got athleticism. He's got a good receding hairline. He's got good ball skills. Like, he's really got all the things you need in, like, when you're looking at a gritty white dude. Yeah, that's going to... Rex Burkhead. Receding yeah, hairline. Yeah. He's got all the stuff that you need. Exactly, but man. More, more upside. Not a shot at Rex. Just Rex was a sixth rounder, I think, or fifth rounder, yeah, sixth rounder. And he really is, like, I, like Ben Jones, who obviously is a Georgia Bulldog, Georgia Bulldog legend. He, well, there was that 6'8 dude that was hitting the sled in the combine or whatever, looking like an absolute unit who was their tight end. And he was making big time catches. And Ben's like, this is when this kid's a freshman, this Brock kid's a freshman. He's yeah. like, he, that's not even our best tight end. That kid is going to be so, like, he has been legit since he stepped in Athens, Georgia. I want to say, even just him, the rise of him made... One tight end in that class transferred to Nebraska. That was the one who did all the 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 robbery stuff. And then I think another tight end transferred to LSU. Like two tight ends transferred out of there because they probably realized like, oh, this dude's gonna be the dude. Yeah, I love too how college players can get away with that much knee being exposed. It's such a swaggy look. I know. Hey Jack, what's your what's your thoughts on the you know SEC being bad this year? I mean, I I don't think they're bad, but they're definitely not. Good. I also think oh. college football. In I, didn't, I, I didn't expect is, that. Is very weird this year. I like it. I think it's culture. awesome. Yeah. I yeah. Think, I think there's a lot. There's not as much of a front runner, which makes it yeah. more interesting. Like team, like top ten teams, all of them have a shot. Yeah. Like I think a real shot. Washington. Washington is a player. Good dude. ball club. Good ball club. 
Yeah, I think it's good for the whole sport in general, and it gets away from the whole SEC. He's king. Like, there's team, there's two like, or three teams in the SEC that they're going to, you know, it's going to be one of them or one of the Big Ten teams that come out. Um, could I the could, Big Ten, and I could could the be, Big Ten I, have the best conference? Big no. Ten, I think, right now. Why not? No. We, I think it's just weird. Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, yes, all in the yes. top ten. Like, do we, all like, top, the five, right? Team. Big Ten No, East. no. I think Penn I think, State might be six. I think there's six as well. Big Ten East, I think, is the best subdivision in all of college. Well, football. either way, the Big Ten has the most teams. I, and that's not me saying our bottom of the barrels, Nebraska and Nebraska. I'm just saying, like, the Big Ten, like, any year that the SEC has, like, Bama, like last year, like, Bama, Tennessee, Georgia, it's like, oh, we have the best conference because you guys have three really good teams that are always in, like, the top seven. And this year, it's the Big Ten. Like, the Big Ten is the team. Uh, and I'm if Maryland beat team. Illinois, like, that would still be – like, Maryland was a player until they dropped on Illinois. That's what makes me, like, hopeful. Like, oh, man, this the thing wide better. open. The reason I shook my head was because, like, our bad teams are really, really bad, whereas, like, SEC doesn't necessarily have that. What are you no, talking you about? No, you got Vanderbilt. You got Arkansas, Arkansas. Vandy. Yeah. Arkansas almost beat. Almost, Bama. but no, it's not almost beat Bama. It's Bama's not nearly as good as they have been in the past. Nearly. Both, we got both like, of what you guys are saying is true, just different, just different ways of phrasing it. Because the SEC privilege, like the but, thought is just they're always better. Like, oh man, Vandy almost beat Bama. Like maybe Vandy's spicy this year. No, they're not. They're not spicy I mean, whatsoever. You think, you think like Rutgers? Oh uh, no, Northwestern, Michigan State. Like they are bad teams. Michigan State is yeah. That's. Indiana, Purdue, Illinois is back to being bad again. No, no, yeah, yeah. I'm not Illinois, arguing. When that. was Illinois good? They were, they were good last year. Yeah, they were solid last year. They really were. I, I promise. Like we won a lot. Bet, I guess we won a lot of bets with them last year. They were good on defense and they had a good run game. The but, uh, like yes, Michigan, and specifically to make it to make everybody feel better, the Big Ten East is the best subdivision, which I think makes the conference, the best conference in football right now. The only way, the, the only way for that to truly hold is one of those teams need to win the national championship this year. One have to win the natty and big 10 has to take care of business in bowl season. Yeah. Cause sec, even as bad as like, we're like, okay, they're kind of average this year. Like you could look at big 10, let's just say pac 12, let's say pac 12, one, then big 10 would be two. Cause sec is in the arguable realm of three. Out with uh, like the Big 12, but I think they're better than the Big 12. Or the ACC. You got the ACC to take into account. I, but I think those are who's debating there. But it's all about bowl season. Like, as, as average as the SEC can look, if they take care of business in bowl season, which years they past, they do come back, that's where it hurts us. But right now, I love where the Big Ten is sitting. Jack, the Jack SEC, started. The SEC has eight teams with at least five or more wins. The Big Ten only has six. But hard, hard conference. SEC playing against each other. Yeah, we have Big Ten's got a tough conference <laughs> tough this year. Conference, dog. That's crazy. Like you're looking at uh Nebraska, a perennial team in the Big Ten West, <laughs> and Michigan house them 45-7. But you, uh, Nebraska might be there at the end. Like, that's a tough conference, top to bottom, now that I'm talking now that I'm talking myself into it. Um, but Jack did point out while you were talking a, a sad thing at the bottom of the SEC East. Look at who's second to last. Michigan with the East, Michigan State, SEC East, East. South Carolina. Yeah, (laughs) well, yeah, they've 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 dropped the ball. Like they've lost games they should not be losing. And if you're gonna say, oh, uh, Arkansas almost beat Bama, it's like Illinois beat Maryland, and Maryland was undefeated until they played Ohio State. It's like that's the same exact kind of conversation. All right. Okay. Okay. All good. All good arguments. I'll go from (laughs) nine down to five. (laughs) <laughs> now, to play devil's advocate to you, Will, you could just say that the SEC as a whole is just better, and that's why the games are closer. Bottom. You could you could just say that because they're they're and I'm, I don't agree with what I'm saying. I am, however, someone listening who's an SEC fan might be bringing this up, yelling at their screen right now. That the bottom tier SEC might be better this year than it has been in years past, and that's why these, you know, perennial you know, national champion contender teams are having a harder time. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanderbilt, South Carolina, Arkansas, you guys are, you guys are, you know, you guys are helping move the needle for the SEC. Taylor, you're sitting in the driver's seat. You need to argue the top of the Big Ten is the best. Oh, I, I, I agree with that. But I'm saying as far as us, I'm playing, I'm, I'm pointing Dennis Kelly. Yeah, but to, for us to team up 
and then you let me do the middle and the bottom. I'll take care of the rest. You just spout off. We got the best. We're the best at the very top. No, they, yeah. Okay. All right. Big Ten's got the best top three teams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in the college Because they college do. Football. No, like Georgia, I think Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan right now on paper is beating Georgia, all three of them. I think Georgia, especially if Brock Bowers is out, Brock dude. Bowers is not Georgia there. is in so much trouble They've because South Carolina, dude. We were at that game. And Athens wasn't as loud as people said. It wasn't as rowdy as people said. It was very cool being around the hedges. But it wasn't the expectation I had for SEC football. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that one. Now, we got to get to a Tennessee game, man. I know, dude. I know. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm dead ass. Like, that's that's an atmosphere. You'll love the tailgating. Yeah. People will be like, hey, you look good in orange. They'll fluff your ego a little bit. And then when you get on the field and the checkerboard stadium going on, like, it is loud bro now i will say this there are people that work at this shop that said it wasn't as loud as people were saying it was that's what i'm hearing say the name. nope are we Go stalling them out we stalling them out stalling them out i already know who it is though say yes jp i like i said I'm, I'm stalling it out i will let you know that that was mentioned to me about the loudness of that stadium there's so many haters in this shop. The negativity is <laughs> I don't know, Jack. Out of control. <laughs> Jack, yeah. negativity. I, I literally right before we got in the bus I was like, hey, Vegas next week. And you go, I guess. That's negativity. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh, the, said, the, there's deadly, the brotherly haters. duo is I out it again. We're going out west. I did not say that I was not part of that clan. <laughs> uh yes. Hating is you a, might be the leader. Yeah, <laughs> oh, but, I, but I'll I'll jump on the positive train too. <sighs> I feel like it was a very loud game. That's Out of the first. three I've been to, Ole Miss, Florida, Tennessee you last year. I went to Ole Miss two years Ole ago Miss when they're throwing the stuff on the field. Loud. I'm talking, I'm talking, they had like they were like Philly fans, but college level to where they were rowdy. They were ready to destroy Ole Miss and Kiffin being there. That when I stood there, because two years ago, that was the whole best three win team. I maybe we had just went to Nebraska, or maybe they were about to play like Michigan. It's like, hey, we actually have a shot. And I'm as proud as ever about uh, Nebraska still am obviously, but I've had to create, you know, I've had to remain optimistic, but that at that time I would have just died on the hill being like, no, there's nothing touching it. When I was standing there for that old Miss game, I was like, this is a level of loudness that mm. is, it's awesome. I, the uh, violent yeah. loudness, the violence in yeah, the loudness. Your ears loud. Yes. Yeah. Florida was really loud. A&M was probably number three, probably. but when it was close in like the first quarter, I mean, really the first half was close. Yeah. The uh, stadium, to your point, when talking about Nebraska, that third and one on that second drive or whatever, Tennessee, they are playing that element of being loud, like when their team needs them to. Like, they're like it, it was a fun atmosphere to be in. I love that. Yeah, because that was, I know we talked about it before with the Nebraska thing, but I was like, I remember being there in 2012 in that night game, and you, it, it literally well, us communicating, you got to use like hand signals yeah. to communicate. You're literally talking, you're like, hey, I got the, we got widest, we got the, whatever you're, whatever you're doing, like, you're literally just hoping to God that the person next to you knows what they're doing. Yeah. And vice versa, obviously. And I I sat there and I was like, damn, like it really wasn't like that because you're packing the stadium. Uh, no, you're you're right. Yeah. When I was saying there, you even made that comment and I was like, I wasn't going to, I didn't at all play the side of like, oh no, they'll, they'll, they'll get loud. I was just like, dude, I know. Like when you needed them to be loud as shit, they were not being loud as shit. Because yeah. Kenny Bell brought up a point. He's like, I want them to take that down. And it was the, the banner that said, uh, you know, this many games sold out record or whatever. And I was like, brother, you can't like that is that's our thing. We gotta, that's your we, thing you right gotta now. Keep, like yeah. that's what you have to hang your head on this program. Yep. But those fans we'll are back. holding on by a thread, holding on by a thread. We'll be back. If we die, we die. All right. We should get into if the ugly. If we die, we die. Let's get into the ugly. Yeah. The ugly. Do you want me to rat or you? Uh, who went last? I might've went last in the bad. Oh, hold on. I just got a text from S and P 500. Hold on. Eight and five going into Monday night football. Eight and five. The ugly. Sorry. The poo that gets you beat. Malik Willis's awareness. Tyrod Taylor checking to a run before halftime. Rid, uh, Ritter throwing three interceptions because I actually believe, and I, I hate doing this because I know he's a young QB and stuff like that. And I love our, I love Coach Smith. But I do think Heineke wins that game if he's playing. And then uh, going slow in the fast lane. I was driving a, I was driving to the bus today, and there was a car in the – we're talking a four-lane highway. There was a car in the left lane that there was five of us in a row right behind him. And it's like, dog, get the fuck over. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. That's that's yeah, for sure. I've never been so on the same level of you like, as right now. Trust me. Like I, I know when you gotta play, 
you know, there's four lanes. You're in the left lane and you got, and you can't look in the mirror and see you got cars behind you. Like, get the fuck over. That's the shit that gets you beat. Maybe killed. <laughs> in some instances, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, all solid. Uh, my ugly. Thanks. Uh, Colorado second half. Just, I cannot fucking believe oh, Colorado. that, bro. Colorado. I cannot believe that. Because when I, when I, when I saw that bet, I was like, man, plus 10 and a half is dead. Stanford plus 10 and a half. I was like, that is so dead. And then sure, they won. Yeah, I, mean, they I think, won. I, man, we should have took money line. Triple OT, right? It was triple yes. OT? Yes. That, oh. I thought that was wild. Um, oh. doing, doing a podcast with individuals and talking as if you were played an international game that you never talked in, but you, for whatever reason, have believed it and you actually live that life and you have like actual stories that never really happened. What happened there? You don't remember? Uh -uh. Last last week on the podcast, you were talking to Delaney and Jersey Jerry about the time you went over with the Titans to play the Chargers. Yeah, but I, London. I right, right, right. I pulled from that so I didn't deviate and talk about my time in Washington because I went over there same exact time frame in Washington. Gotcha. Is and that so, issue things you beat CTE? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 no doubt. And Delaney and Delaney, I think Delaney was kind of talking about it and just kind of played into the fact that maybe I might have might have been over there, but maybe I just talked into it. That was a time where I'm like. Him being on Zoom, I'm just like rolling with the punches because yeah. we went over on a Thursday too to where it was like, I, I can't remember if that's what we were talking about or not. I bet you Delaney didn't even pick up on that because on Slips and Picks last week, we were talking about Josh Dobbs and I was like, you know, people are saying he's the best, <laughs> he's the best quarterback in Tennessee volunteer history in the NFL. And he's like, oh, really? I didn't know that. I'm thinking like, oh, Peyton Manning. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But we, yeah, we funny. just kept bullying. Um, all right, more ugly. Uh, Jameis Winston's pump up speech to Alvin Kamara on the sidelines during the game. Yeah. That fucking, the care, this, just Jameis being Jameis. It's like, you love it, but like that shit, you're getting beat, literally. And I, I bet the way Alvin Kamara was looking at him, you're like, there's no fucking way. I line. loved even Al Alvin Kamara's like response to him. Like, he kind of did the, yeah, yeah, just. <laughs> Right. He gets all animated. Boom, boom. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Hurts, three interceptions, and actually should have had four interceptions. That, the last drive in that two minute when they're trying to go down, it was like fourth and 10 or whatever, and he launched it, and the DB should have picked it off. Uh, George Kittle, one reception for one yard. I don't think that's on Kittle. Whoa. <laughs> should they get you beat, Georgie? Yeah. I don't think that's on Kittle. I think that's on the coaches. Like, when you see CMC and Debo Samuel out, you literally got to go, Him. That's the guy we need to feed the rest of this game. He's, he's a spark plug. He's energy. Feed him the ball over and over again. And let him get the fuck after it. So I think that shit gets you beat. And it actually did get you beat. My last one, going back to my flights, the 10-year-old kid putting a seat back, sitting in an economy seat in front of me, and his parents looking over, noticing me, looking back at me, and saying nothing. That shit will get your fucking ass beat, dude. <laughs> you know, I, I literally... I put the... I did the knee. I did, like, the, the double knee feminine tuck like this, and I pressed it. As I felt him looking for the, I, I saw him looking for the little little circle to press it and go back, and I could feel the kid doing that. And eventually, it's like his his want is more than mine. His why is bigger than mine when it comes to defending the seat. So he I wanted it it more. Him. He wanted it more than you. Hit it, and I hit, and then I had to hit the the leg spread apart, and then the dad and I was I was a loud noise when I did the leg spread apart, and the dad like looks at his son and looks back at me, and I kind of gave him the, and he just. Look back and focus the rest of the flight. And I thought, like, hey, get your, get your boy. No, you know me on flights. Yeah, I'm, I am submissive on those flights. Like, yo, just get me to where I'm going. <laughs> if that was you, you'd be having a little kid. Hey, you get your son. You get your son to move that up a little bit. That's ridiculous. <laughs> or he looks back like, oh, you, you, yeah, you can't tell him. I'm not looking over like, man, that's a lot of real estate. You can't tell him to take it easy. <laughs> Sir, do you mind putting that in the yeah, fence? Yeah. That shit was... You kind of just throw wild. the ball in his court and see what he does with it. Then if he doesn't do nothing, you're kind of thinking... There's more mad. All right, bitch. That would just make me more mad if I took the time to say something to somebody like, hey, could you please tell your son? And he's like, no. I'd be like... And then the lady comes over and hands me the snack half-ass. <laughs> I might take the whole plane down. That's what I'm saying. I don't want you, to become you, that guy. You might have to beat the dad's ass. If he looks at you and looks away and you're like, hey, can you, can you, you know, yeah. what are we doing here? Dude, I saw this video of this guy on a bike uh, going across a bridge the other day, and the guy, like, gets, like, he's riding his bike, and there's a kid walking, and the guy, like, kind of moves the bike, kind of, like, shoves the kid out of the way, and the dad's filming the video, and for whatever reason, that that video was in my head, like, the whole time I was in the airport with Wynn, just thinking, like, you know, those little carts are driving by, people are in rushes, like, if, and I literally was like, I would legit fight somebody if they did that to my daughter, and it's just, oh, man, yeah, yeah. so anyway. Anyway, coming at somebody's kid, 
I feel like that's just a quick way for dads to get fired up. Yeah, you some you know they some, sometimes you need to get checked. That'll yeah. get you running hot. But you know it keeps you running smooth and cool, dude. Yeah, I know. Cannon, the <laughs> scent of all trophy games was created with support from Bustin' with the Boys and Duke Cannon to create a thick body oh. wash and a big ass brick of soap. The idea was hatched right here at Bustin' HQ. We wanted to bring a scent to life that celebrates college football bragging rights in the greatest rivalries, especially when November, December come around. A thick, high viscosity body wash formulated with a noticeably higher viscosity and built to work effectively on your body and not spew down the shower drain. The big ass brick of soap would beat the shit out of whatever soap bar you're using because it's triple milled for superior quality and it's just better. Uh, find the new Duke Cannon scent at DukeCannon.com slash trophy game and now available at your closest local Walmart. Uh, shout out to Zach Zinter. It was either Zach Zinter or Trevor Keegan. They had a post on Instagram the other day talking about Duke Cannon and they, really? br- and they said trophy game. Zinner. Zinner? Damn. And he had, trophy, he had trophy game in that. Good, good. No good. mention of the Bustin' Bowl though. You don't mention your ad read about the Bustin' Bowl right there. You said trophy games, rivalries, just especially be- when you get to November, December, I thought. Just because, only because it, it, the the game had passed. Like if I'm still saying, yeah, it was created for the Bustin' Bowl and just about the Bustin' Bowl, but to get people like, hey, if your rivalry is elsewhere, not Michigan, Nebraska, if your rivalry is elsewhere, this soap is for you. And also be a part of that rivalry. Yeah, be a part of that rivalry. It, yeah. it does kind of stink that uh, Bustin' Bowl isn't taking place. Like that's a public it's, thing. It, yeah, it bothers me. Here's what bothers me. Uh, in the world of University of Michigan right now is they played two trophy games since the uh, Michigan-Nebraska game and both like, their social media has posted about the Brown Jug and they're now posting about um, Paul Bunyan. And they, so there was no love. There was no that. post of like trophy game, Nebraska, which I get. And we've <sighs> talked about how that becomes more, more of a rivalry. It, we've talked about it. And the best way for that to happen is if the Big Ten West, you said it's wide open. I, I pray to God that Nebraska can win the Big Ten West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be hype. That would be, be hype. so hype. That would be, dude, imagine. We would, we, would, we, would, we would go to the Big Ten Championship in, in Indianapolis. I know. We would go to that and watch. And that'd be like, hey, bus and bowl 2.0. <laughs> 2. Point, we're back. I'll give um, the if we die, we die speech. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny, too, that you bring that up. The social, social media, people on social media are so stupid sometimes. Like, you... The uh, the coach rule his speech he gave to Nebraska yeah. I thought was electric it wasn't quite Will Compton esque but it was it was electric and then you put the whole if we die we die speech just you gotta love all this the and some guys stuff. like pretty wild that you'd say if you die you die it's just a game bowl all that bullshit I'm like those dudes are so corny bro dude corny as fuck it's like obviously but and we've talked about in the past like <laughs> there was a time where you and I'd be like if we die in the football field good yeah yeah, yeah. peel me off yes and, and you, it's a, like uh, again. It doesn't matter to me if everybody understands that. Like, it's you're in those moments and you know you understand all of the work you put in to get to a high level, high stakes, high pressure game. And you're, you know, your coach is giving you a speech and people be like, oh, that's not my tone. That's not my style, yada, yada. Dude, when anybody drops a line like that and you're in that full moment together, and it's just if we die, we die. Like there'll be some that's like, I'm not dying, which is it's funny to think about all the different dynamics. But yeah. I know for me, my meatheadedness, oh, like look to you and like kill me on the field if if that's if that's how I need to go. Hell, it's on an God, immediate if this headbutt. Is it, take me out. Yeah. Like take me out, throwing my body into somebody on defense. Oh, like damn it. throw myself into an oversized left tackle and let me go right there if your will be done. <laughs> like people don't get like. There is a there is those few that that's all I cared about was a few and Kevin Durant even quote tweeted and it was like this is it like and that's and all you I need up for you yeah too. I know and that's all you need is, the is there's just so there, there's that small percentage that's like I vibe with that and that's all you care about everybody else it's like you just don't you don't give it and it's okay I know I think that's the problem they though suck but it, it, it's okay one thing you learn about especially if you're in the locker room and you like to spend time with a bunch of groups like it's not clicky and you're around kind of around everybody you start to get a sense of what dudes that are into speeches like that and the dudes that aren't. And a lot of times you catch yourself in hype situations thinking about the dudes that aren't into it and being like, oh, I feel like I'm kind of lame. But really, you yeah. gotta be like, if if that gets you going at all, buy into that. Immerse yourself not in a the feeling. moment. There's not, dude, putting on a, you, a motivational YouTube video while you're in the sauna or grabbing some conditioning or getting a pump in or going to play a football game or you're at halftime and you're putting something on and you got that thing that motivates you that might be corny to some people, the goosebumps you get and the willingness to go and run through a brick wall after that, 
Yeah, it's so hard to replicate. You're juicing me up, right? Because you're right. It's like, there are people like that. And again, it's like, everybody everybody has to retire at some point. And some of those, it's in high school. Some of it's earlier than that. Because mm -hmm. whether skill, whatever God bless you with, whatever it may be, you had to stop sooner. So immediately, you're trying to find all the things that get you maybe out of that mindset because you wish you could be there or not. I, I'm not saying that it's like shots. But at the end of the day, the way you're juicing me up is like, not everybody's going where you're going. Not everybody's trying to get to where you're trying to get to. And you've got to become delusional in that. And you know all the work you put into something. It's like, who, who, who are these people that kind of take that away from right. you type of thing? In the world of football posturing, it's so easy to get lost in the opinions of others. Mm. But when you take the moment to be like, this juices me up and this gets me going, doesn't matter. It could be the most random shit. Like at Miles Garrett, he's into the, uh, the the Dragon Ball Z type stuff. That gets him going. Thinking about him going Super Saiyan and, and go, uh, Goku. It's like, if that's your thing, use it take it and you this like bring it with you because there's gonna be a handful of guys you didn't even recognize being like yo that shit's hype as fuck that shit gets me going too and that's a foundational piece to a friendship that is so special mm, yeah so special and you're you're grabbing something you didn't and i will say this 80 percent of the individuals that thought oh that shit's lame were the dudes that didn't play that didn't that had an right. excuse coach didn't like me parents that made me do x y and z and and don't be well, like they didn't that. play sports. Don't be a guy that's a f yeah. But I'm talking. I, I'm more talking about locker room, which you're absolutely right. right. If you don't, if you don't play sports, it's hard. It's hard to really understand. But like, there's nothing wrong with being obsessed. There's nothing wrong. And the minute you're okay with, you're the minute you're okay with people knowing that you're obsessed with the craft. That is when you take off in the sky. Yeah. Because then it's like, I don't care what anybody else thinks about that. I am so solely focused on this. No matter how big, big or small the accomplishment is from a monetary value, that if it gets your fucking juices going, then brother, take it. Yes. And run with it. Sports, anything else. Like I literally, I, 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 in my brain, I'm obviously talking about football and blah, blah, blah. But like, if you have something else, God, that shit gets you fired yeah. up. Because uh, the group chat, like one of my Husker group chats, we're all in our 30s now. They're like, comp, are you being serious here, are you exaggerating? And I'm like, a little bit of both. Like, I know we're in our 30s now and I'm done playing football. So some of it, some things you can look at antics wise where you're like, man, I can't believe I was brain, I'm brain I was brainwashed by that. But you guy, we've all like sat there and been in those moments where you're just so hyped. And whether or not you think it's like a, again, a, a, like a corniness or whatever, but that corny, that corniness just drops a gym, drops a line in that moment. Like you're ready to go. So I was like, yeah, a little bit of both. But you guys know, like, I was always willing to die when Bo would give a speech. Yeah. Because you're just like, you're, you're, you're just like in it. You're in it with the boys. You're in it. And yeah. And I feel like uh, a defense mechanism for so many people when it comes to sports and like getting out of sports, the one thing that people do is they like try to push, push away their past. I'm like, ah, oh, that shit was lame. That shit was, you make an excuse to say, oh, this was not that great because what I'm doing now is so much better. It's way easier to appreciate what you've done. Yeah. And way easier yeah. to appreciate and understand the person you were then, maybe not be the same now. But if you're if you're having a if you find passion in that, then it's okay. To hey, dude, speak it, brother. Yeah. Speak it. Cause that shit is nothing gets me more fired up than a motivational video. And I would sit there sometimes and be like, I'd be playing it and I wouldn't have headphones. And then somebody walking on quickly put it away. I'd be like, oh, I'm lame as fuck for that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, knowing what yeah, I know yeah, now, yeah. I play I turn that shit up and just stare at the person and be like, we're fucking going today, yeah. brother. <laughs> anyway, dude, let's Let's uh let's hit some twisted question. After that, we're gonna do the poopiest moment. Oh, we can we can talk about the shittiest moment. We'll do that with Blandino. We got oh, Blandino yeah. coming. Blandino's gonna zoom in. We're gonna ask him some questions because he's been in some tight calls, and uh, we love to catch up with the boy because he is. I think he's working with Fox Sports now because they saw his appearance on uh, the Bus and Beer Olympics. Yeah, it had to have. That's literally yeah. busting. If you look at busting with the boys, it's a gateway for the rest of the rest of the world. Uh, who's the Who's the girl that hit up George Kittle? Oh. Uh, Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa? Oh, yeah. If you're, if George Kittle's on the, pod, on the podcast, does that ever happen? Obviously, he's married to a wonderful woman. They have a great relationship, but I am also saying, hey. Yeah, people that, are getting... You know, people notice. People notice. If Diggs people, got a pick. Diggs got an interception. Right after, right after, after, right after he Right after came on Busting with the Boys. Um, let's talk about the quest, Twisted Question. Twisted Question is brought to you by Twisted Tea, the smoothest hard iced tea out there. Perfect for pool parties, college game days, tailgating with the boys. Keep it twisted with Twisted Tea. Grab refreshing Twisted Tea today. This stuff really is incredible, dude. 5% ABV. You're not getting that carbonation. Your tummy's not going to get hurt. You're going to literally feel like this is a fall drink right now. I'm a king and queen. Everybody in Knoxville loved it. We were like, hey, once we take a photo, Twisted Tea, help yourself. They're like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. 
Everybody loves Twisted Tea, man. I even got David, whatever, the drill sergeant. You could tell he's a beer drinker. He didn't want nothing to do with drinking, but he just wanted to do push-ups. But I was like, you ever tried Twisted Tea? He was like, no. So he no. tried this out. He took a drink, and I was like, listen, seems like, you you know, this is, this you've never tasted this before, but what are your real thoughts? He's like, well, it's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, that's right, brother. Nice. Laying down the defense. Twisted questions. We got some horror theme going on. And just a reminder, spooky season is upon us. Go buy your Spooktober merch. Um, what do you got for us, Mitch? All right. So our twisted There's questions. There's a couple here, aren't there? Well, we're going to start with this one and then we're going to go in. I love it because I do love, I love spooky season. Our twisted question this week. If you were trapped in a haunted house with only one horror movie character to help you survive, who would you choose? What man? I know who you're gonna go with. Who? OG. There are other players in the mix. <sighs> there are other players in the mix. Let's talk it out. Let's talk through it. Let's 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 say what we're thinking because nobody wants to listen to a podcast with no words. <laughs> let's uh so my I my immediately when I think about a horror movie characters, I go to the original three slashers, which is Jason Voorhees. Uh, Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger, and then you can also add Leatherface in there too. Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees are are, are very similar. We've had the argument in the past where where Jason was created after Michael Myers, and, and essentially you can just see it's like a super size, super human version of Michael Myers. So th th that's them. Here's where I think uh, Freddy Krueger plays a good good place, but he's got his cons as well as he's the only individual that talks out of those four. So you can have a, some sort of dialogue communication strategy involved in all that instead of you just coming up with everything. But your boy's really only valuable in the dream world. So you got to hold it right, down in reality. In the and then hopefully, what about, what about hopefully the, the killer goes asleep and you, then he can get their ass. The it clown. Pennywise. Pennywise is a... Yeah. yeah, but here's where Pennywise is not... is is um, It doesn't... Not as fun? He, no, it's not as fun, but it's where he falls apart is... His value and his strength is the belief of fear. It's a similar as Freddy Krueger. So ah, if the individual hunting nice doesn't pool. fear Pennywise, he shrinks, becomes smaller, and that's how you defeat him. The only individual that really hasn't shown any weaknesses and, and without putting any research into it is Michael Myers. Jason Voorhees, his, his, um, his fear, his Browning. kryptonite is water. Uh, Freddy Krueger is fire and the fear of children or the fear of, yeah, the, if fearing him gives him strength. Leatherface really doesn't have any, but he's never been killed like Michael Myers has and come back. So it, your front runner right now is your OG Michael Myers. That seems like a front runner to me. Do you have any out there that we're not talking about, Jack? I can look at Scream. Some, I would, I'd still scream, yeah, but scream, scream, scream is a human. Most, yeah. of these, most of these killers... They have these like child complexes that they all deal with. So like internally, I do feel like they're all deep down have these fears. Vulnerable. Yeah, very vulnerable when you really break them down. So that's why I feel like Pennywise could be a sneaky one. But I'm gonna I'm rocking with Michael Myers just because his sneakiness. Yeah. I like mean, you, you number one, I'm gonna feel like I'm by myself anyway. But right when I'm about to get killed, the boy's gonna pop out and put a knife in somebody's neck. And think about yeah. this too: is in all the movies, you talk about childhood traumas all that never once except for the ending of halloween ends which i just we will we won't even we're going to completely ignore we're that we're never talking about yeah. that movie though all of the movies all of the recreations the other directors that did it michael myers is described as the uh the epitome of pure evil yeah where there is Demon. no there is no emotion there's no negotiation there's nothing that you can beat him with with like a, a certain element whether it's wind fire uh, any of that stuff water like jason Voorhees. To give you being like, okay, like this is the guy that if he's truly on your side, there's not a whole lot of people hey, that can take you out. Chucky would be a motherfucker, dude. Yeah, but I just that don't. Achilles just yeah, is he, yeah, is he bringing his girl be a with motherfucker. Him? Is he bringing his girl? It, 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 we're talking OG without the girl, bro. Yo, Chucky could be a little, mm -hmm. a little hey, bastard in the house. Jigsaw might be. He's gonna be up there playing that God's hand, just like on the speakers. Like, fair, that's fair. But it, then, but to play devil's advocate to that, he's out there from his ivory tower doing whatever he wants, I'm boots on the ground. True. And I'm a little less scared when I got a partner. I got a partner in crime with me, like with me 
in the room. And I can just hear him over the microphone of this haunted house being like, hey, well, we're going to play a game with them. You Don't got, you worry. Uh, the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. That's a good one. That's a good one. You better hope to God it's springtime, though, because he only comes out every 27 years during the spring. So that's Jeepers Creepers thing. Uh, Here's one to think about, too. Would we Are we allowed to count, like, Predator? That's a good one as well. Predator and alien? Technically, that would qualify as a spook based on past conversations we've had on this bus. Predator would be... be a big predator song. might be the warrior of the galaxy. What is his kryptonite? Sport. Uh, they can just be killed. Like, yeah, okay. I think what they do is like they put mud on themselves and then like camouflage because this whole thing is him being invisible. Yeah. And they'll like do things like in one of the Predators... They literally cover themselves in mud, so they're like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sort of, the original yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger is covering himself in mud because he realizes, like, oh, it's just all thermal that he's seeing. Yeah. yeah. Hannibal Lecter would be solid too. He's a strategic serial killer, so he would have like an understanding of what to do and how to do it. But I think that's more of a disposal of body than it would be the, the actual murder. Yeah. I, dude. I, yeah, it might be Predator. Oh, really? Predator uh, might be the one. I mean, think about it. Michael Myers. He's. I mean, yeah, he's demonic, but he's dumb. Like he's. He's going to pop up and uh, Predator's going to do his thing where he zaps me and then zaps him. Unless I just become Arnold Schwarzenegger, I would have to win the game. Yeah, but but uh, I, I, I don't, there's nothing that shows me that Michael Myers is dumb. Other than the, probably the education system he went through. through you think, you think he's going to mud himself up? and No, but I think how many times have we seen Michael Myers get killed, shot, stabbed, and live and keep moving forward because he's essentially a demonic being? And when we're having the conversation about Predator, Predator can be killed. They can just, like, I asked, what, what's their cryptic? It's like, oh, they can actually just be killed. So if you're, are we facing another horror villain? Well, yeah, what was the initial question, Ian? This is a fun <laughs> conversation. Uh, if you had to pick one to survive in a haunted house, like, which one would you choose to, like, help you get In out? a house. Yeah, but who's getting us? A haunted house, or we're, we're talking about entities then? Like a poltergeist? Are we talking about one demon? Are we talking about conjuring? Trapped in a haunted house. So, uh, have you said? Hang on, hang on. Have you seen Predator? I have. I've seen like not in depth, but I've seen the movies. Yeah, you need a like Predators. Predator is him. Yeah, and I know he's got the dreads. He's got the yeah. They got the little mouth that opens with the mouth that comes out. Like I. No, the mouth that comes out. That's Alien. Oh, that's what I'm they of. now Predator versus Alien. One created like a super predator alien to where maybe that's the guy. It was like predator, and then the mouth comes out. It's like a yeah, dude. You gotta watch the uh, you gotta watch the OG. I think you'd really like it. I think a better question might be, who would you pick a movie character? Who would you pick to defend yourself in a haunted house versus, and then you insert a character, whether it's predator, or Michael. Who are Myers you picking? Sports. You've just talked about everybody. I know. I think I think the safest bet is Michael, based on the fact that he can't die, and if he's truly there to protect you then you can literally just use him as a human battering ram. He's not going anywhere. And like you said, he's going to pop up. There's really no way to kill him. So probably, probably Michael Myers. I just didn't want to do Michael Myers because he is the OG Halloween. I wanted to get like a little like a uh, hipster vibe with you and just pull something out of my ass. Maybe one of the aliens from Signs. <laughs> trapped in a haunted house. You know how things trapped in a pantry somewhere. Yeah, maybe like the Annabelle doll. Oh, that would be creepy. Right? That's what I'm saying. If you're in a house, that's where I think Chucky would be a little bastard, dude. Like, he'd be, he'd be skim scheming. You know what I mean? Like, he'd be scheming with you. He'd make you feel like you're going to die. He'd bait you. You'd be the bait for, say, it's Michael Myers in there, a predator. And then Chucky just comes out of nowhere with his master plan. Is that going to be your answer? Because I'm going to go Michael. I'll, I'll, I'll rock Chucky just to be different. Chucky, Chucky 1A, 1B predator. <sighs> Really stuck on Predator. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mitchie, Jackie? I'm staying with Pennywise solely because if we're in a haunted house, like, that's his bread and butter. Like, that's where fear is very, It's a very good so point. He's yeah. in a, a position to win. I also do think if it's in a haunted house, Jigsaw, the same kind of situation, he's going to have the layout. He's going to have the needle pit. You know, there's going to be some fucked up stuff that he's putting you through, but I'm staying with Pennywise. I like that. I like that pick. Um, I'm going to have to go... With, with no, <laughs> I saw Jaws just say on Shark. My, uh, my Megalodon. Movie, just because the ones I forget what movie it was, but he was getting like beat the shit out of, and then gets up and it's like fine. I mean, the first movie he shot five times and falls off a balcony. Who we, who's he talking about? Who's Michael, he want? Gone. Michael. Oh, Michael. Okay. So, like, he just seems invincible. So right. I'm just gonna go with him. That's that's kind of my thing. Is like there's little, there's no way to kill him. 
So like, at least I got that guy for me, no matter what. I loved, but uh, you're escaping, the haunted you're, house. You're kind of escaping in the haunted house, right? Like, it's like if you put a knife in Michael Myers' head and shoot him a few times in the head, like he'll be down to where it's like, okay, I survived the haunted house. Yeah, but he won't be down because he always gets back up. And you think, oh, it's over because they never truly kill him. Like, oh, they, <sighs> and they turn around and think, then that little ring. Yeah, right, he, dude. Hollywood. We, we can talk about the last movie. He got his ass whooped by that dude in the sewer. Whooped. And then just got carried through town. That shit pissed me yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. That, that got was carried. the worst thing. It got destroyed. Ever. Would you like, be? legit got it. They had him get his ass beat, which I thought did him such a disservice. So disrespectful. Even more than him getting, yeah, his, getting his ass beat in that sewer, the biggest disservice to Michael was him teaming up. Because that, yeah. like, takes away in, everything. But Fuck him, dude. Definitely. Fuck Michael Myers. <laughs> I'm out on Michael. It, for some reason, this isn't working. So we gotta, we're going to go into... Dean Blaine Dino. Yeah, right now. It's All right, that's a fun, twisted question. We're going to go in. We're going to hit in, jump in the interview with Dean Blaine Dino. You guys are going to love this. Dean is the best. He's the guy that they call in on Fox, and he does all that referee interviewing, like when there's a play under review or a holding call or any penalty that takes place that people want questioning, that people have questioning on. He's the guy. He's also the referee at uh, Bussin', Bussin' with the Boys Beer Olympics 2023. So without further ado, here's Dean Blaine Dino. Now. Hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Dean, welcome to Bustin' with the Boys. Oh, you oh, are... Are we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling. Go ahead, Willie. We are tuned in to with Dean Blandino, known for being the primary referee, the head official of the Bustin' with the Boys Beer Olympics 2023. We're happy to have you, brother. Happy to be here. It's been it's been a minute since we had the Beer Olympics, and I'm excited to to reconnect and talk a little ball. Let's talk about Beer Olympics for a second. How did you <laughs> how did you feel about the process of the day? Did you have a good feeling for the rules? Did you how did you feel about your authority during the whole thing? Give me a, a bird's eye view yeah. of Dean Blandino's day during Beer Olympics. I, I didn't I didn't have a lot of confidence going in. I'll be honest, um, you know, but it was it was actually really incredible. It, it was, you know, from the rules, from the competition, you guys, let me tell you, you two are the biggest group of sore losers I've ever, <laughs> I've ever met. But you know what? It was awesome. And, uh, and what's great is that, uh, you know, a lot of people think there's still people, I think you guys posted something about, you know, how the beer Olympics allowed me to get a gig on Fox sports. And there are still people that think that that's actually true. No, that is. It doesn't seem yeah. like Fox is paying you that well with the decor, with the uh, with the walls you got back there. Decor, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I just moved, so I'm I've I've got boxes. I don't have anything set up yet. So, oh, so, so I'm you, actually, yeah. You could argue that Fox is paying you very well then, <laughs> getting a whole brand new house, setting everything up. So you All say because of the Beer Olympics, exactly. No question. I, exactly. I think we gave him a big boost. You're welcome for that. You said poor uh, sore losers. You said we're the worst set of sore losers you've ever seen. Who was <laughs> the worst? Who was the guy that you're just like, dude, get the fuck away from me? So there was that little incident, the little kind of puking incident when we were playing. Um, I oh, think it was. Yeah. What, 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 yeah, it was hard. Flip, like, flip cup, flip cup, flip cup. And I think it was. So the Midland guys were not happy. We're not happy. And I think it was Cameron. who <laughs> would ju And I love them. They were great. But it was just like enough. You guys lost. You lost. And, uh, and so that, that went on for pretty much the entire day. They still were not over the fact that they lost and, and the whole throwing up thing and, and all that. Yeah. They, they were definitely being sore losers. Another person that came to mind that was, uh, I think I saw you on a show with somebody talking about it. It was David Bakhtiari constantly coming up to you, trying to negotiate the rules, essentially yeah. re rewrite the rules. And I did, when I rewatched beer Olympics back, there was a moment where we need to talk about your stones, not standing up to Dave is there was a, he hit the corner of one of the tables, it broke, and you said two-point deduction. Then, I'm pretty sure he slipped you a 20, which wasn't making that Fox <laughs> money yet, but slipped you a 20, you said, if Taylor will notice, it's not it's not a deduction. Or don't, it, it, wasn't it, will be. A, it wasn't a 20, it was two hundos. It was oh, 200 respect, respect. That, he, that, he, that he slipped me. But he And I said, I'm not a rat. I'm not going to tell on him. I just said, hey, if they notice, you know, then, then I got your back. I love it. I, uh, <laughs> one more question and then we're going to jump. We'll jump right into some football, but I love your shirt and I love the fact that you're rock. Like letter Kenny is 
not a whole lot's come out of Canada. Not a lot of whole exports have right. come out of Canada, but Letter Kenny has, and it's an incredible show. What, how'd you get on that? I a buddy of mine just turned me on to. He's like, listen, you gotta watch this show. I think you'll like it. And I'll, I'll be honest, I struggled the first episode. I'm like, what the heck am I watching? And then I just I love it. I watch every. I just binge watched every season. I just love, I want to move to Letterkenny. I want to hang out. I want to go to Modine's, the whole thing. They're awesome. <laughs> Riley, Jonesy, everybody. I love Letterkenny. It's, it's an incredible show. Jared Kizo, who the, the writer of that show, he is, he's incredible. Have you happened to watch the spinoff, Shorzy? Yes, Shorzy. I don't, I, I like Shorzy. I don't like it as much as Letterkenny, but Shorzy's great. Obviously a great character. I just, I like the fact, I always like when Shorzy would just show up on Letterkenny. You'd never see his face. You didn't know. And just all the chirping. But Shorzy's great, too. Yeah, the new season comes out October 27th. For those of you who want to watch it on Hulu, pretty incredible. <laughs> and that's a free ad. That actually is a free shadow. Let's talk about Ball. And I'm sorry, I've kind of r ran this a couple times. Do you have anything off no, the top? You're doing a, no, you're doing No, you're killing it. Let's talk about how you found your way into this role of just knowing all of the rules. Like, what, like how do you get to a position you Stumbled are now in the NFL? <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't have know anything about officiating. It wasn't an interest of mine. I played sports my whole life. I played football. You know, I wasn't good enough to go beyond high school. And uh, I just wanted to stay involved in sports. And, you know, growing up in New York, all the major sports organizations have offices in New York City. Sent my resume to all of them. NFL called. They had an internship available. I interviewed in a couple of different departments and I got the one in officiating and that was it. Like I just wanted to get my foot in the door. I learned the game from watching film and just looking at tape, learned from an officiating perspective. It's like, okay, I was editing film and I was, you know, put this, put this list of plays together on a tape. It's all offensive holding. And I learned it that way. And then it just kind of evolved from there. I love that. That's awesome. That is, that is, that is awesome. awesome. One, one thing that's fresh on my mind right now is that call at the end of the game with, uh, with the Giants. Yeah. Why would that not be a call of pass interference on Darren Waller? Because the dude clearly tugged his jersey like as he's trying to go for the ball. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and I'm sitting there, and I'm going, if I'm the, if I'm the head of officiating, and I'm talking to you know Brian Dayball this morning, how – how am I saying that's not a foul, right? He grabbed Waller's, he grabbed his jersey, um, affected getting his, his, you know, he couldn't get two arms up. You could see, I think it was his left arm that, that was compromised. And I thought it was a flag. You know, they just threw a flag on the play before, obviously, they get the untimed down. Um, I, you know, to me, it was a foul. You know, obviously, we have this whole, you know, let the players decide the game, but you can't let a team get away with a, you know, a foul in that situation. You know, they're all close. They're bang, bang. But I thought he did grab him, and I, I certainly, if there had been a flag down, I would have had no problem with that. But there is something to be said about the last play of the game, and like let the boys play, which which yeah. you saw in the Super Bowl uh, with the Eagles in Kansas City last year. With that, obviously, yeah, was, that's was like, a whole. That play. one's even less. Like to me, it's like yeah, that. that's a little tug. With, I believe within five yards too, we're kind of like touching and and groping as kind of like a yeah, not a frowned upon thing in that situation. Yeah. So how how do you how do we now go as as if you're talking to football players where it seems like a more of a bias situation where you can be like, how do you keep more consistent in the referee realm? That's it. That's the whole key. That word in all of my experience around coaches, around players, it's not like we're all going to make mistakes. Like we're all, nobody's, nobody's perfect. Um, I was pretty perfect during the beer Olympics. Though, I'll say that, <laughs> but, but no one, no one is perfect. So we're all going to make mistakes, but if it, you know, from an official standpoint, you just want consistency. If you're going to call it in the first quarter, call it in the fourth quarter. If you're going to call it on us, you got to call it on them. And so you're always telling the officials, like, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl or it's the, the you know, the second quarter in week six. You got to call it the same. And if you if you set the bar early in the game, um, you can't raise that bar or lower that bar, depending on the situation, because the players are going to play to that to that standard. And that, that's hard. That's hard. You look at, you know, you look at the the end of the Super Bowl and that, that, like you said, that was probably less of a hold than, than what happened in the game, you know, in the game Monday night, Sunday night. Uh, so how is that like uh, critiqued and taught like behind closed doors? Cause clearly, you know, when a, some, a situation like that, you don't really hear from the referees right after, like, you know, it, it, you guys kind of operate as a team from the outside looking in. It's like, you got the head guy who's going to take the blame, but what is, what do those conversations look like behind closed doors? 
Yeah, I mean, there's so much evaluation that goes into officials. Like, it's crazy. They're, you know, they're evaluated right in the moment. There's replay, coaches, players, the media, TV. We're all evaluating them in real time. And then after the game, like you said, there's a crew, the white hat, the referee, and then there's six other officials that work with that crew, and they travel for the most part together throughout the year. And they're evaluated on every play of every game. There's former officials that sit and look, look at film. They look at coaches' copy. They look at TV. And they look at every call that's made, every call that should have been made. They look at their positioning, their mechanics, um, and they get an evaluation sheet, a report each week. And that that accumulates during the season. So if you don't grade out well, you're not going to get a postseason assignment. You're not. And if you really don't grade out well over the course of maybe two or three years, they let you go. So so there's a, a real comprehensive evaluation system in place. And uh, and so they are they are held accountable, but you don't we don't see it right. They don't. The head coach gets up on the podium after the game. You know, you get a microphone in a player's face, but we don't talk to the officials in the league. I think that's good because that can put the officials in a tough spot. But they are evaluated and and they are held accountable. Is there any criteria for a ref? to be in shape do you guys like do like a uh you know like maybe run a mile under 15 minutes and do 13 push some sort of presidential test because you see so many times first off yeah. boys are wearing slacks out there that's a tough look maybe but, but grab some shorts in september but you see a lot of guys are they're huffing and puffing especially the faster the pace game uh the pace of the game gets now with the running clock as much as it's changed so like yeah. is there any evaluation from a cardiovascular stance on uh referees physical fitness yeah it's changed you know when i first started in like 90 95 96 and my first officiating clinic the 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 requirement was they had to they had to walk a mile that just finish it like not die like that was that was the requirement hell yes and and now (laughs) and now there really is it's more comprehensive they do, they, they do, like you said, more cardiovascular work. There, there's a fitness program. There's a lot that goes into, and they have to maintain a certain level of fitness just to work. Now, look, they're not going to be as, as, as in shape as the players, you know, as how many people are in terms of, you know, professional football players, but there is an expectation and, you know, in the preseason, they go through a, a, a regimen where they have to kind of pass to make sure that they're in shape enough to, to work, to work the, uh, the season. And then they get, you know, they do have resources. They have groups that come in and work with them on their diet, their nutrition, their, their workout routines, their recovery. So it's come a really a long way from, from, you know, at least when I started like in the mid nineties. Yeah. We might have to jump up that fitness test just a little bit. Maybe, you maybe you bring back the presidential fitness test for the referee. And Absolutely. That little box where you have to stretch and you, it or how many, how, how many, se- yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. How many yeah. setups and pushups you get in a minute, how mm-hmm. fast you run the mile, right. the amount of pull-ups maybe like there's, yeah. there's, there probably should be a criteria because, you know, even though it is awesome that they get the diet, to, like, uh, you know, nutrition needs and everything like that i'm just assuming you know it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks like some of these old heads might be a little stubborn and be like okay i'll, I'll show face and eat yeah i've been eating a salad but it's like brother it doesn't look like you've been eating salad yeah no salads out there a <laughs> lot, lot, lot of ranch involved it wouldn't dude f- physical part of being a referee is one thing but the, the mental aspect has got to be exhausting especially on for your end being like and when you started in the 90s there's rules but everything's kind of like okay generally we're playing ball you let the boys go now you sit there. There's a there's a rule for for fucking everything. Like, what's your least favorite rule and why? That's what I need to like. What what rule just needs to go when it comes to the what? The well, NFL? Hang on, hang on. To not put him in a tough spot on well, the trying, rule that needs to go. To technically, put him in a tough spot. But go ahead. Go, yeah. Well, if you just say not a rule that needs to go, but what's your least favorite rule? Just period. Yeah. And why? I like that yeah, you yeah, guys. Yeah. You guys like good cop, bad bad cop. Taylor's like the bad cop. Whoa. Rule comes in, and I like that. I like that little thing you guys got going. Detectives. <laughs> Um, the, so, I mean, look from a, yeah, you're right. From a, from a mental think about, right. From an official's perspective, right. They don't, it's not like they're on offense and they don't play defense, right. They're they're Every snap, every down they're out there and there's a pre-snap routine that they go through. Then you have six or seven seconds of the play with this, with this intense focus and then the post play stuff, right. Then they have to officiate that. And then it's okay. We, we, we're going again. And, uh, and so from that standpoint, it's, it is mentally exhausting. And, uh, and, you know, and like you said, the rules have changed so much, you know, you just think of the safety rules, like the defenseless player rules, there's more rules that they have to remember. They have to adjust, they have to officiate more things they have to look for. 
for me, you know, the one, I wouldn't, there, there isn't a rule that jumps out where I'm like, man, that rule sucks. We got to get rid of it. But I do think we could probably use replay in some of these situations. Um, you know, there was a hit in the, in the, the, the 49er Brown, Brown yes. thing. you know, Gibson gets, gets a flag and on a, on a third and 10 gives the Browns a first down. And it, and I thought it was a legal hit. It was a shoulder to the body and uh, you know, to give the officials an opportunity to correct that on replay. I think that's something the league needs to continue to look at. Um, but, you know, there isn't, I mean, I, I like the NFL rules, quite frankly, I like the NFL timing rules more so than college. I think college is trying to come around, you know, they got rid of the stopping the clock on the first downs outside two minutes. So I, I think the NFL rules are in a good place, but it's, it's not easy. It's a complicated rule book and it's grown over the years. There's so, so much gray area. And I do agree on that, uh, specifically that hit that Gibson had yesterday because Browns, they go on to win the game off of that. Um, it feel, there's just so much gray area. The one I kind of hate the most is like, unless it plays in my favor, uh, is the quarterback. The hit in the upper yeah. field. Of the, like, I want to say there was a, uh, a shot yesterday where Barton goes up for uh, the Fal against the Falcons and kind of Ritter's about to throw the ball. So Barton, the linebacker, he's blitzing. He kind of jumps to match the hand. And all of a sudden, like as he's in the air, uh, uh, you know, Ritter gets it off and he like hits down on top of him. But even as he's going down on him, he's like extending his arms to like not like land on him with his body because yeah. he just jumped to kind of mess up the throw. Yeah. And then that becomes like a roughing the passer. And it's just so, t I, I understand that we're protecting guys, but man, moments like that suck. It's yeah. It seems like that's like uh, protecting guys, but it's also protecting assets. Like the quarterbacks are the most valued player in sports. Yeah. So it does seem, is there, and it's so much of a judgment like between refs, like there's so much gray. Like Will said, like how do, how do we differentiate that? How do we make that a little smoother? I, I think you look at, and it is. There's no question when the competition committee gets together, right? Quarterbacks are an asset, right? There's only I don't know even know if we have, you know, 32 that 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 are quality quarterbacks, right? There's very few people that can play that position at a at a level like a Patrick Mahomes, right? So. So that is definitely an asset, and it's something they're in a defenseless posture a lot of the time, and so they should get extra protections. But like you said, you know, and I think the league has done a better job in terms of roughing the passer. They talk about matching the hand. They talk about, you know, if you're go taking the quarterback to the ground, if you can brace yourself, if you can get off to the side. But it's a lot harder to play defense now. It really is, and there's less things you can do, and the game happens so fast. I think you look at you got to you got to study film. You got to look at your officials. They they look at each crew and they say, okay, we're averaging like 15 fouls a game right now. Okay. That's both teams all in, except the decline to offset. And you look at, okay, one crew is averaging 10, the other crew's averaging 20. Well, well, what's the deal? Is it the two teams or are those crews calling less or more based on their own philosophy? So you look at that, you look at the film, and you just try to evaluate them to get them closer to that middle. Um, so everybody's kind of in that same place, but it's, it's a challenge because you have 17 different officiating crews, seven officials on each crew. That's hard to get everybody on the same and page. Dude, all the time. It's a lot of moving parts in that official, Yeah, room. a lot of moving parts. And, but it's, e it's, it's easy to see what officiating crews call what the, 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 you can just variable. Oh yeah. And the point, team points out to you. You, you literally have to scout the refs and them. Hey, they yeah. don't call a lot of pass interferences. Do business as business is being done until you're called on first one's on me, that type of vibe. And you got to play and use those rules to your advantage. Um, a lot of advantages and disadvantages when it comes to football. We have a segment called the shittiest moment. It's presented by dude wipes. Go and look at that right there. I, I don't know if you're using TP out there, brother, but if you are, you're in the stone ages, it's time to get that wet wipe on that tissue. Cause those things are not only flushable. It's going to make your bum feel a whole lot better. Our shittiest moment with you or a question for you is going to be, Tell us about your career. What's the worst moment in your career that you're like, dude, I might not have a job after this, or maybe a bad call that you said was one way and it went the other way and you were obviously wrong. Something, baby. Give me the something. The public came after me. The public, yeah, the public's always coming after me. I, I think, look, there's a couple of things that I remember that I'm probably known for. And, and, and you know, I got I got into a little bit of trouble back in, what I don't know when it was, 2015. You know, I was on the Cowboys party bus and, and I was, you know, TMZ happened to be there. And, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and, and, and Roger Goodell, you know, and he's a good dude. Uh, he doesn't really get the love, uh, you know, you in said, the media. You, you said Roger Goodell's a good dude? He's he, a, yeah, he's saying he doesn't get the oh, credit, is he? 
off camera, off out. Like, I trust me, you'd have a beer with him. Trust me. Okay. But you know, so he, you know, he's going to call me in to talk about this, and I'm like, man, I might, I might not have a job after this. But he was good. Um, you know, and then you know, around that same time, the Des Bryant play, which look, I you were it. you were the I guy on Des Bryant play. What's that? You were the guy on the Des Bryant play that catch? I was the guy on the Des Bryant play. That's right. Oh, yeah. Me and my, me and my guy Gene territory. And and look, I get it. Everybody, it they changed the rule to make that a catch. At the time, the rule, it was clear. It wasn't a catch. I got to abide by the rules. I can't make up my own shit. But, you know, that's kind of stayed with me. And I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to, um, in two years, the 10-year anniversary, because I know Cowboys fans, it's going to be awesome. Like, I can't wait for my uh, my Twitter feed, um, you know, on that day. I'll get the charge going. Yeah, yeah, I'll get the yeah, charge going. Do. I will, I Did will. You, well, you get it going now on Saturdays with, with your Cornhuskers. You're, you're <laughs> always it? tweeting at me about the official. It was week one. You were on the, uh, you were on the, uh, yeah, because it was a Fox game. It's like, they're sitting there and I see you pop up on the screen. I'm like, oh, come on, Dean, call it this way. Like I was trying <laughs> on that one. I, I was I was in your corner, yeah. man. I had <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, question about the shittiest moments. Which one happened first, the party bus or the catch or the no catch? So the, the party bus happened first. But mm. people, like people are, they, they get there. So they think that I was on the, so the Lions, the week before the Lions and Cowboys, if you remember this, they're playing in the wild card game and the Lions are up and it's a third down and there's a flag for holding the officials announce first down Lions, and then they get together and pick it up. The Lions go down, go go lose that game, and then the next week the Cowboys and Packers, and then the, the Des play happens. the The bus incident happened in training camp. The Cowboys are out in California. I was out in California. The, the Lions fans think that after the Cowboys Lions wild card game that night, I was on the party bus with. Jerry and, and, and that's and why crew. you picked up. Yeah. That's why the flag and was that's picked up. why they were just, yeah, that's, that's how the, these kind of urban legends kind of, kind of, you know, so in your psyche, maybe that's why you're calling it not a catch on desk. Cause anybody See, who watched football their whole life, it's like the same thing. They said the same thing. They said, Oh, so now <laughs> reverse psychology, you're trying to get off of the party bus vibe and you're going to, so it's all, so I can't win. Well, we just need to see the camera footage of the bus and then the camera footage of the conversation you have with Goodell. Because if you're on the bus having a good time and you hear the stories on that bus, that's a wild bus now. And I'm sure you've got a couple you could tell us off camera, but you go do that. Goodell wants to talk to you. He's a great guy. He's a, You'd have a beer with him. All that stuff. And now there's, it's not a catch with Des Bryant. I feel like I can see where the conspiracy theory comes from. This is yeah, a, get out, we'll get out the tinfoil. Yeah, we're, we're making it worse right now. Let's move on. To <laughs> hey, I, I actually, uh, I have two, I have two extra things. My first one, and this is, I'm, I'm not trying to find like humor in any of this part, but is there a, a way, like you were talking earlier about the criteria that ref referees have to meet throughout the year, or they're not going to get a postseason bid or maybe their career ends type of thing. Like, is it like a, such a straightforward criteria to where if referees were in this new uh, wave of the gambling and everything else to where they graded just above and be like, okay, I can have a down game here because I'm grading out so well on the year. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, no, dude, you're absolutely a hundred percent right. And this is something we always guarded against in terms of with the evaluations, because they, a lot of officials, they would keep track of their grades and they're like, okay, I'm at this level. I can't afford another another missed call, so I may not throw my flat. You know, so that it has an impact because that's right. You think about just psychologically, that can happen. So we always try to like guard against that and create an evaluation system where it wasn't solely just so objective, where it was like, okay, your grade is based on your calls. You got right. 100 calls during the season. You got 93 right. You're 93%. There was some subjective elements added in terms of like, you know, you have your supervisors, you're they're grading them on, on other things. So they're not just solely grade-based, call-based, because like you said, then, you know, if I know I can't get another incorrect call, I might be less likely to throw my flag and you can't officiate that way. Right. You're just, you're, it, it's a problem. Especially when you, like you, you know, you can't help but think about it with that. There was like a 30 for 30 episode with the referee and the basketball, that documentary. Yeah. It's like, you, yeah. you just think like, man, some of this stuff they do, like people with the high integrity in the referee world, like you have to, it's almost like it has to be like a fluid, 
a fluid at like, you know, test, exam, whatever it might be, because it's like, you just have no clue what goes on, especially if you have 17 officiating teams, seven on each one and so forth. A lot of people, sevens. and that was always my, my, one of my biggest fears when I was at the league office. What if we have like an NBA situation with gambling and things like that? So the league, the league has groups that they, they look at the betting lines. They look at how calls, officials calls are impacting the lines, how they're impacting games. They look, the, the officials go through a crazy security check, bank records. They talk to their, they go knock on doors and talk to their neighbors before they're hired. Any kind of business relationships, any kind of conflict of interest. It's it's like, it's really, to get hired as an NFL official, you go, I, I don't know of other jobs that, that have that level of scrutiny, you know, coming in. Shit. I love it. I love it. Did you got anything you, else? I uh, kind of, I too, kind of. Um, and it's going to bring us right back to how we started this entire show, the Beer Olympics. <laughs> one Question one, after that event, was there any anxiety from you from an NFL standpoint of catching some heat and did you at all? No, no, not at all. You know, obviously, if I look, if I had been, if I was still working at the NFL and I was in charge of officiating, I'm pro I love you guys, but I'm probably not officiating the beer Olympics. <laughs> that, 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 fair, fair probably enough. not going to, but, but with Fox sports and they're great, you know, the biggest thing that the biggest fall, it's not a fallout. It was like a, people didn't realize I had tattoos. I mean, that was, that was like the biggest, so funny. I was, was blown away by that too. I know, I was, oh, this like, is oh, the shit, fucking guy. This dude is, yeah. He's fucking awesome. He's just like us. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I think, mean, I don't have any, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you I know, think, you, I'm thinking like, Oh, this is a cool cat. Yeah. You, Cause you think he'd be like more of a suit yeah. type yeah. of type of personality. Yeah. Definitely not a suit, but I love it. Uh, and the last question, are you, uh, going to officially accept being the head referee for 2024 beer Olympics? hundred percent. I'm in. And then I do want to, at some point discuss, like, I want to bring a team and compete, you know, I might, you oh, know, get ooh. a partner, and, uh, you know, I talk to a couple of people. So I'm in either way, a head official, uh, a team I'm all in. Yo, we should, a thought could be, Go ahead. he enters in the tournament, but if we can get one of those teams of, five to seven, whatever it is, fully refereed up. They do the rules for real. Mm -hmm. I think that could be a move. That would be elite. Like an actual NFL referee crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like an actual crew to where all the, like they understand their language. They understand what the rules that we want in place. There's no subjectivity coming from like, you know, I, I thought Nick did awesome, but different buddies like doing the referee stuff. Like you just have a crew that's like, okay, we understand the assignment. Yeah. We'll carry it out. Dean can bring in a team. I think that would be fun. You we could get we can get a group of yeah we can get some local yeah. officials and put a, put a squad together and we could build this out. I'm excited. You did spark one more question out of me. Uh, if you did compete, who would be your ideal partner for Beer Olympics? Um, I mean, I I need somebody. I I need. I feel like I need like a a, a professional athlete, somebody that with some capacity because I watched you guys especially you, you got Taylor, I mean, just chugging and, and what you're able to do on that, on that level. I feel like I can handle my own, but I, I need somebody like, I need a ringer. So you is know, that, whether, is that ringer Goodell? No, no. Could you I, don't imagine? Think, imagine. I don't think he's going to do it, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I've got a couple people in mind. Maybe that'll be like a surprise. Who knows? Who Ooh, knows what, well, you know, I like it. The last guess. thing I had, and I'm sure you get it all the time, but I feel like if he was not on screen, I would think that we were interviewing Bill Burr. Really? People do say that. People His voice, he could before. easily oh, do. Bill Burr, oh, not on screen. Yeah, yes. he could like okay. do a, uh, you know, not, not cover band, but cover comedy and just do all of Bill Burr's jokes. There's no question. I, I was thinking of starting a cover comedy group where you just do, <laughs> you do pick comedians and it's like a thing now. So, yeah, but I've gotten that before. Oh, uh, you, it sounds like you have plenty of avenues, brother. Thank you for coming on at such short notice. You are, you are the fucking man. Really, you, you crush your job. You crush it at Beer Olympics. It's been an absolute time. What a friendship we've all found. Yes. I can't wait to see him on uh, Fox for a Nebraska game again because I'm going to feel like I have an ally. And I know, I just know when a call comes down, he's going to go on TV and he's going to, like, I just feel like he'll have to call the game the right way because if not, might, like, we got to get a couple you out. Depending on the game, I might say, hey, listen, Will either is going to love this or hate this. <laughs> That'd be cool. That would be awesome. I would love hey, that. Thanks a lot, Dean. Appreciate you, bro. Let's give a All round of right, applause for Deanie. Give the man some love. Thanks, bro. Have a good one, man. All right. Take care, guys. What a guy. Let's uh, we got like we, we got, got to round this go. out, round this got, piece out thing in, in three minutes. That's fine. All right, hey.
You want to hit this last ad, but before we do, uh, Will and I, we have this thing to do at 1.30. It's 127 right now. We want to thank you so much for being on another episode of Bust of the Boys. We know during the fall, a lot of our fans watch football, consume football, so we're always on to the next thing. Thank you for stopping by and just taking a moment with us. Do us a favor. Subscribe, unsubscribe, resub. Hit the comments. Put a pumpkin in the chat. If you made it this long, do just put a pumpkin in the comment section. And then uh, get the merch, dude. Spooktober merch is out now. We're going to enjoy the rest of the spooky season. It is... <laughs> the best time of year.